people post on it just looking for some help or advice or warning somebody about something weird going on. Yeah. That I wouldn't want to be bombarded with all the time either. This person's complaining about road construction. Like, why do I want this? That, well, see, that's the thing is if if there were something that was useful about it and and I could streamline the process and cut out, like if there is a community notification mm-hmm. versus a conversation, whatever those would be labeled at in the app, I would be I would I would investigate further. I just feel like it's all the conversation and I don't want to have to sort through all of the nonsense to find one bit of information. I want to start a yeah, little I fruit and vegetable it. garden. Does anybody have any recommendations? Does anyone know where I can get a custom piece of glass cut looking for a piece about 65 okay. by 20? Are those just your literal this neighbors is or my... is it like the surrounding Royal Oak area? Like well, I, It's not my direct neighbors. So you're in like a Facebook page. That's literally just my subdivision. Right. It doesn't yeah. include anybody outside of the subdivision. I don't know any of these people that I just logged okay. in and now have, I'm getting requests and messages and posts about. Yeah, see, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. And and here's the other thing is I take our dog for a walk. I take Teddy for walks. The kids and I walk to the ballpark all the time. And when there are people out, I do talk to my neighbors. Right. I prefer the face-to-face interaction and 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 just and getting to know them that way. And then I've had other neighbors and then knock on the door. Hey, we we had this happen in the neighborhood. All right. Fine, that's great. I, th- I appreciate. Oh, it. Thank you for letting me know. I'm not saying be antisocial. You, no, you got you. You say hi to your neighbors. You got their cell phones. If you need something, you ask for something. That's fine. Be late. Be neighborly. Yeah. I thought this was so funny when you brought up that you got invited into one of these. Oh yeah. And then Heather's reaction of like they're they're, they're great. That's not the same thing. It's not the no. same. No, and I'm but glad I that your mine. neighborhood is responsible with how they use that access. Some ticket text, but first we go to the phones. Let's go to Andy in Fowlerville. Andy, good morning. You're on 97.1. Hi, how are you guys? Yeah, my wife actually works for a company that manages HOAs, and she's got 10 or 11 of them around southeastern Michigan, all the way down in Monroe, all the way to Rochester Hills. And there are, there are subdivisions that look like normal homes that are just detached condominiums. And people get the bylaws when they move in. They agree to this. They have board meetings. And literally, they, they will call and, and do something that's a violation. And my wife, one of her jobs is to do a drive-through once a week and then write up the violations and send them a violation. And people will flat out tell her, well, that doesn't pertain to me. And I just can't see being governed like that. I mean, I live in, of course, I live in Fowlerville, but they have all kinds of rules. I mean, it's literally, if they made a paperback book out of it it would be you know two inches thick yeah it's just crazy they seem very complicated and, I, and very I, intrusive like John. yeah i would not want somebody telling me i'm i mean i don't want a, a car on blocks in somebody's front yard but then again i don't care if they got their boat in their driveway right yeah so i agree anyway you guys had a great day. yeah too. appreciate Thanks, andy. it andy yeah Some ticket texts are lucky I'm not in any of these, but the stories I've heard are legendary. Like a neighbor throwing a fit about a bench on a a front patio being an inch too tall. If you have some of these stories, we would love to collect them phones and ticket texts. People, if you're, this is why when we were looking to move to a new home, that we wanted to make sure we did not move into a community or into a subdivision that had an HOA. Really? See, I did not want any part of that. I don't mind the HOA. So, well, the people have mentioned that as well. Heather loves being in a homeowners association and engaging on their app. Look at my surprised face. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. The entrance always looks good. Everything's That's in great. shape, and I don't have any. But I'm not violating any of the the bylaws, so it doesn't bother me. I'm not trying to build a shed or put a fence or, or park a car that doesn't maybe run in you my driveway. Are, but you just don't have that, you know, that that peeper. That is looking at everyone's house going, who could I possibly say is doing something wrong? You don't have a Karen in the neighborhood? I'm sure there's one yes. somewhere. Oh, you're going to take down that tree? Or maybe... <gasps> oh, wait, 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 wait. You can't do that. It's against our HOA. You have to go through and we have to vote on that. I don't know. We may, I don't, Maybe our, we have very little bylaws, maybe? Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. We don't have any issues. If you don't know who the Karen is... 
it might be. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Oh, 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 oh stop. wow. Yeah, I didn't say it. Well, never yeah, complained about did. anything in our yeah. neighborhood. Red in Detroit, good morning. Oh, what's going on, everybody? Good. Uh, so, it's so funny. Like, my wife, um, she's on the, uh, the Next Door app. Uh-huh. And, um, and it's like Heather said, it's, it's basically what she said. And you got some complaints here and there. I think it's a, not trying to be sexist, uh-huh. I think it's a female thing. Like, females like it. Like, uh, John, if you want your wife to have it, like, she'd probably love it too. Like, I, I don't be on there. I don't be on the app. Only time I go on there is my wife telling me, like, a funny, hilarious story or something like that of a, of a neighbor complaining about something, something ridiculous. So, but it's, 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 it's just, it's your preference. I think it's a preference for a female, though. And I, I think also um, it is kind of helpful because when we was trying to redo our pavement for asphalt, we got the whole like we got like ten houses yeah. together, and it was and it got a discount on it. So that's the good part about it. So I I think that John, if y'all like it, just give it to your wife. She'll love it probably. Yeah, I, or your I, daughters, it, they might like it. Oh, I don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have I'm, good morning. Y'all. Thanks. You too. Hey, thanks, Red. Appreciate you calling in. Yeah, there's no chance I let them on it. Why? I limit their social media anyway, which is already you know, which I bad appreciate. Dad. I think yes, it's a good yes, thing yes. that you As do adults, that. I we think do that's, that, yeah. But this should. is just a, this another. This would just be another avenue for somebody that I don't want talking to my kids. Talking to my kids, it's just well, they don't it opens have to up post that door. On it. They can just update Lurk. you. Yeah, they can go through and yeah. read some of those and let you know the good ones and bad ones. Yeah. Heather, some people have your back. From a business standpoint, we do house painting in nicer suburbs, and we get a lot of business from people referring to us from the app. Yes, we've gotten a lot of referrals from people on our group. Says forty percent of our business comes from referrals, some of which comes from the app. Subdivision Facebook pages are good. We need to borrow that one tool that you use once in your life, and a neighbor close by has one. Nick and Canton. Yes. Heather's exactly right. There's a lot of helpful stuff when you do it. Some more pushback. Finally, Jim will see what people think of his catio. It's a neighborhood oh. eyesore. <laughs> we just lost Heather. <laughs> She's out. Back. You have 99 plus notifications. Hey, jerk. Yeah, that's uh, the one thing. And, and I know that, I mean, I can manage the notifications. Don't have to have those turned on. But if I'm not going to look at it or if I've got to sift through all of that stuff. And again, I just don't want to open the door for somebody to feel like they can voice an opinion on what I what might be going on on my little slice now of I, this world. I had said that somebody in your house, I really do think it'd be beneficial, and you joked it off as Teddy. You know, one of the underlying things here is when we talked about this off the air the other day was I said, well, wh- wh- why not Lisa, your wife? And you said she's less likely to do this. Oh, yeah. You married right. Oh, yeah. She, she likes drama even less than I do. It's, it's, she's absolutely no nonsense. And I, she may do it for the comedy factor and just, oh, I can't believe somebody said this. I can't believe they asked us about this. Like it, it, that, to me, would be something that would be very comedic. Texter says, I think I'm like Jansen, allergic to the general public, Mike in Sterling Heights. No, thank you. We've got texts coming in. we got phones to get to right after the update. Did you have to get a permit to build the catio? No. No? Okay. I needed to. I didn't. <laughs> from his oh. wife, maybe. <laughs> hey, we don't need to hear from you, Falar. Hey, I'm a, it's, it's my time, baby. We'll get to Falar. Time we'll get of the to hour. Li- <laughs> Who's that voice? <laughs> Who's this guy? We'll get to Falar some Lions jerseys, too. But yes, neighborhood apps. Do you need them? Are they good? Are they stupid? It's 97 1. Brought to you by CGC Water Treatment. Lions front office leader Brad Holmes speaking today with a week to go until the NFL draft in Detroit. He maintains that anyone they select must be the right fit with the team as he has in past years. He's also not against the idea of trading up for the right person 
and it'll take an offer he can't refuse to trade out of that number 29 slot, although he says if he does trade down, he hopes fans will forgive him. The new duds of the Lions will be shown off tonight at Ford Field. A season ticket holder event will finally reveal what their redesigned uniforms will look like. They're inspired by cars, apparently, said to bring a classic look into the modern world. Although the Tigers lost yesterday, Tarek Skubal looking like an ace again. At least he thinks so. Six innings, two earned runs, and six strikeouts. Says he does regret an easy error in the first, but after that 5-4 loss, his ERA is at 2-2-8, an 0-8-0 whip, and 26 Ks to just five walks. Yeah, even after yesterday's loss, Detroit sits 10-8. and eight. Cleveland, Casey, and Minnesota all lost yesterday as well. Today's matinee is going to wrap up their four-game set versus the Rangers. The Tigers need a W to even the series with Kenta Maeda set to pitch. And adios, Jonte Porter. The NBA banning the seldom-played forward for life after he was found to be constantly gambling on sports, including bets on his own team to lose the cardinal sin in betting. The league says there's nothing more important than protecting the integrity of the association. From the Corwell Health Sports Desk, I'm Chris Villar. For more, go to 971 The Ticket and Odyssey.com. Chris Villar from the clouds reads the ticket text. Coming in off the top rope. Jim's first post on the app. Hey guys, my wife and I are looking to take a swingers cruise. Any ah! recommendations? <laughs> <laughs> What's the signal? Or it's supposed the pineapple, to the pineapple upside, upside down. down pineapple. Yeah. yeah. Hey, anybody know where to get an upside pineapple uh, upside down pineapple sign? There you go. Obviously, that was joking from a texter. Our old neighborhood. We were on the Facebook thing. Yeah. There were allegedly swingers in the neighborhood, and it made the rounds on the Facebook page. <laughs> wow. Brought you dug, stand behind you and listen to half the well, conversation. That's a swinger. Stop it. <laughs> Taking strays. He's not up for an hour, but if he wants to defend himself. I just came walking in here to grab uh, one of the cleaning wipes, and I hear this. Yeah. So I have no idea what I just walked into. Am I a swinger? <laughs> I'll let you think about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Learning about our coworkers today. Tell you that yes. at ten eighteen. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the duck cars. The cars yes. and tees. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> next door is a toxic, angry political bitch fest. Reads oh. a ticket text. It shows what people really think about each other. Posters beware, Jason in Ferndale. This is so th here's another thing. I talked about the fact that I like to walk around the neighborhood and converse with people. I, every time somebody drives by, I make it a point to, to wave. Just it, it just seems like the nice thing to do when I'm driving by somebody. I do the same thing. If I'm in the truck, I wave to them. Um, they're much less likely, much less likely to bitch to you in person oh, than they are sure. on the app. For sure. So if you got something to say, if you don't like where the boat's parked or what I'm doing with my truck, you're welcome to tell me face to face. Heather loves the HOA because it's the same people she travels to Vail with every winter to ski. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's how you say it. Vail. Vail, yes. yes. Vail, very snooty. Yes, Chris did beat. Chris and Kent, we've lost Heather a second time. Good morning, Chris. You're on 97.1. Good morning. First of all, Heather, you are far too classy to be mixing your brain with these two guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We try and bring her down to our level well, every day. I lived in a house for 30 years in a subdivision in Canton that had all kinds of HOA rules. And the beautiful thing about social media when it came out was I would just troll. I would tell them, I'm thinking about raising chickens in my backyard. Oh. And I'd get, a, I'd get a visit from the president. It was beautiful. Uh, I turned my garage into a man cave with carpeting and TV and refrigerator. And everybody thought it was really cool. And the president came to visit me and ended up having a beer in the garage with me uh, in my unconventional garage. But here's where it gets funny. We downsized two years ago to a condo. And my son and son-in-laws put the over under at three of how many violations I would have in my first year in the condo. 
they should have taken me over because I barbecue in the driveway. That's a no-no. I put up lights on my patio. That's a no-no. And I started moving couches into the garage to recreate my man cave. And uh, But I found the solution. I got elected to the board of directors. There you go. There you go. And now when I go to the meetings, um, I'm swaying slowly but surely all the old people that live around me that this is cool. Come on over, watch the Lions game in my garage with me. And I'm getting a little, very little pushback, and I even got my violations waived. So, Chris, let me ask you this. You yeah. said that moving the couch into your garage in, into – Two couches. Oh, okay. okay two, a monster, put in there whatever you want. They had an issue what with what was going on inside your house? Yeah, they said that, that my garage, was, this is in the house I was in, that my garage was not being used in the conventional manner. <gasps> and I went to a board meeting and I said, look, I'm of Middle Eastern heritage. This is what mm-hmm. we do in our garages. And that shut them all up because the last thing they wanted was anything ethnic <laughs> attached to this. Mm-hmm. So I'm a, bit of, I'm a bit of a Richard when it comes to that stuff. But I troll them, have fun with them. And we got so many Karens and Kyles living in these places that that's all they do but i'll tell you what if you john i like your idea if they walk by engage with them hey come on in my garage and before you know it the husband is like i want to do this in my garage and the wife is like no we're not doing it i says you know you're not ready for this this took 25 years (laughs) for me to do this where my wife agreed (laughs) but a funny side note to that as much as my wife hated my man cave garage I come home some evenings, she's laying on the couch in the garage watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> Funny how that works, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, there's a it's there's a an HOA day, violation. Bro. All right, good talking to you guys. Enjoy your day. Hey, great Thanks, phone call. Too. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would a garage cave bother somebody? Look, if you're being loud and you're doing stuff late at night, that's a different complaint. The actual existence right. of the garage cave, why... Why do the Karens and Kyles have a problem? I, I think the biggest one, I, I'll, I'll go to you, Heather, on this, is oh. what is the problem okay. if somebody has their boat backed up in their driveway up by the garage and it's kind of just it's sitting there on a trailer? Who cares? Right. Why does that bother you? How is that why? different than my oh. truck being parked there? Why are you coming to me for that? Well, I'm just asking because okay. there well, are things. You're in an HOA. Look, we, okay. Again, wh- the other day I brought up to you about, you know, I personally wouldn't have a problem if somebody had a couple cars in their yard and oh. was working on them. I live down in a rural area. It doesn't bother me. I, I've got so much bigger things to worry about in life than what people do. Now, there is, I, I'm sure I have a line too, you know, <laughs> but you know, people a, setting stuff on fire every day or something might be. A boat in a driveway wouldn't bother me. In fact, my neighbor has done that for the past several summers and has mentioned it to us like, hey, I hope, hope this isn't bothering you. Okay. It doesn't bother me at all. However, you have a conversation. There you go. Yeah, exactly. The adults. If it was a car on blocks that didn't run and it was sitting there for a while, that would start to bother me. And the weeds start growing up around. Yeah, that's that, that's that that would bother me. Okay, yeah, and I kind of get that line. I just don't get the RV RV and boat thing. If it's kind of tucked away on somebody's property, they're saving money on storage. Mm-hmm. I mean, are you serious? I, what what is wrong? I'd love somebody to call in and just try to explain why they have a problem with that. I, I think people some people have a problem because like it is technically a violation in our HOA rules. You're yeah. not supposed to have a boat in your driveway. Rules. So I think that's why it bothers people is that rules. you're not supposed to be doing this but you are i'm gonna go talk to the president yeah and it, it doesn't go, bother me it at can all. go even as far as if you're gonna paint your house like you've got to get oh. cleared by the hoa yeah we don't have th- yeah but i Although mean i'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing I'm, I'm, i probably couldn't paint it pink right yeah but who's gonna paint their house hot pink like i mean okay i'm not gonna put it past I'm ju- i don't it, know it could happen but why does this it's, person it's have extreme. mason blue stripes all over their house yeah i'm, I'm not going to yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna make a rule and, or enforce one for the vast minority of the chance that it would happen. Jeff, you got some thoughts this morning. You're on 97.1. Hey, guys. Um, I uh, moved into a subdivision three years ago, and the first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to put up a flagpole in front of the house. Mm-hmm. So I looked into flagpoles. I got this telescopic one. I can take it down during storms. Um, so the association I belong to does not have a stipulation that you can't have one. The city I live in said I can put one up. There was no restrictions. But just out of a cur- just courtesy, I sent a note to the HOA saying I planned on doing this. You would have thought the world came to an end. Oh, yeah. um, they came out to pictures of the house. 
Uh, they had a meeting. They then said that because I am one of only three houses in the sub that are ranches, I couldn't have my flagpole be above the roof of the house. So you know how big a ranch is. It's right. not very big. So, but my, uh, I ended up saying, well, it's, you guys don't have a decision anyways. The city says I can put one up. I'm just giving you a courtesy. They thought, the, like I said, they were up in arms. They wanted to have a meeting again. And I just said, well, screw you guys. I'm putting it up. And it turns out the one I put up doesn't even go above the roof. But if I lived in a colonial, I would be allowed to put one because unless it was 60 feet tall, it wouldn't be above the roof of the house. And um, But I ended up driving through the sub. I'm the only person in the entire sub that has a flagpole in front of the house. And it's not in the middle of the lawn. It's next to the house. It's in a corner. You can barely see it. And um, But that's the kind of uh, stuff you have when you move into a sub that has a lot of older people in the sub. Just like that mm-hmm. uh, last person said, uh, you got to convert these people. So two years go by, I drive through the sub, there's two more flagpoles in the neighborhood. You know, but that's the stuff you have to deal with. They're worried about what kind of landscaping um, stuff you have. You want to put rocks, you have to have a black diamond edging. It's little stuff. Yep. You can't have a shed in your yard. Yeah. You can't, they're, nitpick, they're nitpicking over everything. You know, they don't want to shed in the yard, but they'll let you park the, the – where do you want me to put my riding mower? Well, and, you know, and, and I'm Jeff, not allowed to have a shed in the yard. And I think part of the frustration, you said, well, you got to work the board. Like, that's a second job then. You're taking on a yeah. second job to run for a position or, you know, sway votes. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Yes. Also, you don't have to have black diamond rocks in your, you know, landscaping. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Everybody wants to say on what you're doing. It, uh, it sounds I, like it for other yeah, people. Yeah. I don't have that issue. Well, Just saying, we've had a great experience with our HOA. Texture says, I'm a realtor. HOA is the number one complaint for past clients. Oh, yeah. I would I, I would be, there'd have to be a whole lot of positives, location and other benefits of the house to move into a, a, a house that is a part of an HOA. We'll get some more phone calls. A quick note on what we want to see tonight with the Lions jerseys. Uniform unveiling at 7 p.m. It's 97.1. Hey, Natural Lawn and Tree Service, you want to take care of that lawn in front of your house? you got to give Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service a call. Get green, stay green with Natural Way. And that number, 888-GET-GREEN, or on the web at naturalwaylawn.com. And I've been dealing with these guys for just about four years now. And my lawn looks great every single year. I'm proud of it. And I don't have to do much other than mow it because they take care of everything. They're going to use fewer chemicals and environmentally sound practices. Each lawn is is assigned its own specialist, and they're going to custom tailor a solution specifically for your yard and your home. And then to, to apply that solution, they're going to send out certified applicators and arborists. So there's professionals coming out to deal with your yard. They'll take care of it. And if you see crabgrass, it's too late to fix it. So do it now. Give them a call, 888 Get Green. If you call them right now, purchase a full lawn program, you're going to get free grub control. But you got to mention my name along with 97 won the ticket. That number, 888 Get Green. Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service. Get green, stay green with Natural Way.
John got an invite to one of those neighborhood apps, and he said... (laughs) (laughs) And we've been talking about it. We'll get to the calls real quick. Uniforms tonight for the Lions. We'll talk about it tomorrow when we actually see what they look like. But any do's, don'ts, things you want to see or don't want to see? Uh, I don't want to see any new colors other than black. I think that's fine. It's it it goes with the color scheme. I have no issue with that. Um, I'm I am just I'm I'm interested to see, like, is there going to be a new stripe somewhere? How how is this going to be? Because they used the Mustang as the inspiration for the helmet, and we saw that that was cool. Now I want to see if they're talking about the Bronco. How are they going to connect those two? This is a chance to brand this era visually, yeah. right? Everybody thinks about the Barry uniforms or the Millen era where they did use the black. When you say you're going to kind of take some of the history and wrap it into this, you're inherently going to be pulling from an era of losing. That's just the history. Mm-hmm. But what I like about Campbell and Holmes, among other things, is they don't give a damn. Their thought is like, whatever the past was, we have enough confidence and security in what we're doing that if they want to bring back something from the 80s, the 90s, yeah. the 2000s, if it means incorporating some more of the black into the uniforms. Kane Campbell wears a lot of black. I could see them mixing it in. Yeah. I think it's a chance, though, to kind of put their own, their own stamp. visual stamp yeah. on it. Yeah. In, in, in a decade or in two decades, we'll refer to this as the Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes era. And there have been some leaks, right? The the Bronco thing you referenced. Yeah. One of the videos showed more block lettering, more blocky, like yeah. Goff's nameplate on the jersey. We'll know tonight, 7 o'clock. I think it's going to be cool. It'll be fun. For the hour ends, some quotes from Brad Holmes speaking today about possibilities and scenarios with the draft. Dave Burkett's got a mock. Uh-huh. We're going to get to that before yeah. the hour ends. AJ Hinch, 935, Tiger Manager, will join the show. Let's get back to the phones. Craig and Royal Oak. Good morning, Craig. You're on 971. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, it's funny, on the, on the next door app, um, I, I catch a lot of humor in some of these people's posts and replies. But this one this morning was. Watch out driving down Pierce Road in Birmingham. There's a lot of toads crossing the road. <laughs> and so one of the replies from one of the one of the people was was this. You better watch it. You may slide and hit a toad and hit a hit a post. You may need a toad truck. Uh that's a that's a Costa joke, yeah. No. <laughs> Appreciate the phone call. You need a toad truck. Thank you, J Mo. Thank you, J Mo. Like, what's the point of that post? No one's, by the time anybody sees it. Yeah, they're already at work. Oh, let's see what's going on in the neighborhood. Oh, maybe I got a couple of toads. Toad crossing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Frog damn. legs. Frog legs for dinner. <laughs> Steve in Southfield, you're on 97.1. Steve, good morning. Steve. Oh, don't do this to oh. Steve. Hey, Steve. what's up? Oh, come on. You heard us, Steve. Come on. Steve, it must be we, on We his know app. you're there. We know you're there. Enjoy no. the rest of your day. Yeah. That's too bad. Holmes quotes, Burkett mock, A.J. Hinch, first Heather with the news. Well, for years, the water tower at the Detroit Zoo has been, you know, a landmark for mm-hmm. drivers that go down on I-696. But since the iconic purple and black mural of animals disappeared from the towers last fall, a new mural still remains quite secret. Mm. I don't know if you've noticed. So until last week, it's basically just remained a black and white slate. Like yeah, it's, it's blank. Nothing's there. Well, now Detroiters have noticed that there is a blue stripe along the bottom and things are underway. So apparently the new paint project is going to take a few weeks to complete. And then from there, once the painting is complete, a new vinyl wrap is going to be installed. But still the design of that vinyl wrap remains a mystery. Nobody knows what it's going to be. The exact timetable for when it's going to be finished is still up in the air, but things are starting to move. Now, the zoo originally planned last summer to change the water tower mural for the zoo's 95th anniversary, but obviously things yeah. have been kind of pushed back. So Maybe it'll be inspired by an actual Bronco or Mustang. Maybe. <laughs> We'll see, right? It's a bad joke. I know what he's doing. Continue. I, yeah, I know what he's doing, too. Uh, Bill Belichick has his first job since leaving New England. So he's going to be a co-host on the Pat McAfee Show Draft Spectacular, which is going to air, obviously, during the draft next week yeah. on ESPN+. Plus. So he made an appearance on the McAfee Show on Wednesday, where he announced that he was going to be joining the draft special. And he also admitted to something kind of alarming, that he has never had a cup of coffee in his life. Uh, 
Huh. Not that surprising to me. How old is he? About 70? Yeah, 70 ish. Maybe a little bit more surprising when you look at somebody that age. You would think that ah, you probably had at least a cup of coffee. But I've never had a cup of coffee in my life, and I don't ever tasted it though, haven't you? But I've tasted it. Yeah. To know that I don't like coffee. Yeah. That I don't want to have a full full cup of coffee. I've had like a little sip of it. Any other coffee flavored item items like uh, uh, coffee flavored ice cream? It's good. I hate coffee. Like I yes, not coffee flavored ice cream, not coffee flavored jelly bellies. Like it makes me just yeah, that sounds disgusting. But I like the coffee. I don't like it. The taste every now and then. They say it's an acquired taste. But I'm not a coffee drinker. I, don't, yeah. I, I was a little caught off guard because I think stereotypically long hours, yeah. coach, needs a pick-me-up, yeah. cup of coffee. Yeah. Does your wife drink coffee? Neither of us do. So you don't have a coffee maker in your home? We do not own one. We, do either, we don't yeah. either. And that really? has been an issue once. Like somebody wanted a cup of coffee and I'm like, hmm, there's a Tim Hortons down the street. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't That's where you got to get a French press. French press. Because it doesn't take a bit. You put it in Just the cabinet. Just put it in the cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I wonder if he's going to wear the hoodie. Oh, yeah, of course he's going to wear the hoodie. Cut off sleeves and you everything. You have to, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a man was charged in federal court in Illinois for transporting millions of dollars worth of master's merchandise and memorabilia that was stolen oh. from Augusta National Golf Club in Georgia. So the man is accused of transporting the items across state lines to Tampa, knowing that all of them had been stolen. And according to the government, the items were taken from the famous golf club and other locations beginning back in 2009, all through 2022. And if this guy is convicted, he would have to obviously forfeit all of the property, any cash that he might have attained from all the proceeds of yeah. selling these stolen items. Well, that merch is really valuable, right? Because as well, I, I, know, I learned week, last yeah. week, they, they don't sell it anywhere but the clubhouse. And that's why people try to get their hands on as much of it as they can to resell it. This guy it says, forget, sell. forget buying it. I'll steal it. Yeah. yeah. Steal it. And, and then resell make, it. Yeah. make the profit for himself. Um, an interview with Caitlin Clark has gone viral and fans are calling the interviewer, um, who is uh, Greg Doyle, a creep. They're oh. calling him creepy and they're he, saying that it was cringeworthy. And when you hear it, it is cringeworthy. So the interview started as it typically would, you know, seemed pretty normal. He politely introduced himself and then he gave a brief pause. And that's when he did the heart gesture that she does yeah. at the end of the games. And take a listen to what happened next. Uh, 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 uh. No, nope. no, it was awkward. awkward, and she looked uncomfortable. I would imagine so. In that moment, obviously, yeah. he went on to ask her the questions. She answered, and and the rest of the interview went just great. But it was a very just unnecessary moment. That I wonder if he felt awkward after he said that or did the gesture too. Yeah, I, I'm not going to defend him. I think he thought he was trying to be funny, and clearly wasn't. Oh, he was. He thought like this is this is going to be yeah. great. I'm going to connect with her. Back and yeah, forth. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. you sound like a creep. Didn't go that way. Uh, you guys, Starbucks is hoping to cre- recreate a tranquil coffee shop experience. Oh, I know. So they're actually adding some noise reduction technology into their ceilings in all the new locations in the U.S. And then they're going to renovate about a thousand locations too. And they say that this technology will improve order accuracy. So. The they baristas can, can actually you. hear yeah. you, and then it's going to improve the overall customer experience. They also say they're going to add adjustable lighting, so they're, they'll have some dimmers, oh, mood some power screens on the windows yeah. so that, you know, so avoid glare get too hot. Yeah. and the heat. So it can be more of that, you know, tranquil coffee yeah. shop I think these are all good upgrades. You can go and chat with your friends, do some work without mm-hmm. hearing all the... Hustle and bustle. Chit-chat in the background. Yeah. Uh, If you're looking for an AI girlfriend, now you can apparently get one. And it sounds like it could cost you uh, a pretty penny, though. So there's a guy in Miami who has admitted that he spends $10,000 a month on AI girlfriends. (laughs) Right? So weird. He's 24 years old. He's clearly single. And uh, he says he loves this. Um, When somebody asked him, like, why? why, he said, well, some people like to play video games and I like uh, he to. likes AI girlfriends <laughs> and basically he likes it because you can customize your experience Yeah, um, and they, they chat with you. So it's not just like you're not just getting like a photo of an AI generated woman. 
not only are you getting that, but they they can talk with you, right? And like right, chat yes, with you. It's but like, you're talking to a computer. I mean, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. It's like online dating with in no a fake payoff? world. Yeah. But there's no payoff. But, but, you're not but, like going on a date when actually connecting with another person. Well, he, I guess it depends on the payoff. Well, I don't need to go there. <laughs> yeah. Both of those stories. Yeah. Creepy guys. Creepy, yeah. Yep. Heather with the news. Coming up next, we'll talk to AJ Hinch. Before the hour ends, Dave Burkett's latest mock and quotes from Brad Holmes himself at the podium today. It's 97.1.
We saw it last night. We're going to see it again tonight. The NBA play-in tournament gives teams the chance to play their way into the postseason, so it only seems right that new customers on FanDuel could play their way into 150 bucks. Just place any $5 bet, and you're going to get $150 in bonus bets, whether you win or lose. And you could use it all during the NBA playoffs. Again, that's $5 bet, and you're going to get $150 in bonus bets, whether you win or lose. And you can bet on things like three-pointers made by the team, by an individual, total in the game, over under total points, first basket score, anything you want. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Jansen to get started. That's FanDuel.com slash Jansen. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA and 97 won the ticket. Must be 21 or over in present Michigan. First online real money wager, only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as downward trouble. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help.
971, John, we got to get a bunch in here. Before crosstalk, we had a Doug Karsh moment during the two Grand Slam. We'll play yep. it for Doug. I've got a mock draft from Dave Burkett, and I have some quotes from Lions general manager Brad Holmes. Where do you want to where do you want to start? Uh let's start with the mock draft. Okay, Dave Burkett, mock drafts on the show brought to you by Moran Chevrolet, where you always get the best price, period. The latest from Burkett, I think this is 4.0. He has QBs going one, two, three, and four. JJ goes fourth to the Minnesota Vikings via trade up. Sixth, Mike Valenti will be happy. Oh, wide receiver falls right to him. Marvin Harrison Jr. Because Joe Alt goes five in this mock. The top two corners go twelve and thirteen. Mitchell and Arnold go to the Broncos and the Raiders. Brock Bowers goes fifteen to the Colts. Graham Barton. Mm -hmm. offensive lineman 20 to the Steelers chop Robinson 25 to the Packers Jackson Powers Johnson Tampa Bay right in front of the Lions Cooper DeGene 28th Detroit selects in Dave Burkett's 4.0 mock draft for the Detroit Free Press offensive lineman Zach Frazier yeah out of West Virginia center guy that could play both all three positions on the inside that'd be a great pick if you're going to stick right there and what did we say earlier if you're going to trade up to 20 or, or, you know, 19, that's where Graham Barton goes. I think if you only want to go up a couple of spots, a couple of other guys that we had talked about, Chop Robinson, I mentioned it. I don't think he's there at 29, but you're not going to have to go as high, probably 25, 24. He goes at 25. Jackson Powers Johnson, he goes there at 26, the number one center in this draft. And then Cooper DeGene, who I've, I, I think is, is a tremendous football player, goes right in front of the Lions. So if you can stay there and get a quality player, like Zach Frazier, I'm okay with that. But if you've got Cooper DeGene, if you've got Jackson Powers Johnson or Chop ranked way ahead of Zach Frazier, but you're only going to have to go up three spots, I think that's where we see a move by Brad Holmes. Teams that could use an offensive lineman, no guarantees that they would take him. Steelers at 20. I think the, yep. the Dolphins are in there between the Lions mm -hmm. and 20. You throw in the Cowboys and Tampa Bay. So there's a chance that... Yeah. Guy, I wouldn't even put it past Green Bay. Uh, sure. To be in the market good, for an offensive line. Good point. Burkett says with Frazier, I've gone offensive line in three straight mocks for the Lions, both because I like the players, Frazier, Barton, and Powers Johnson, and the fit. He says, I had Darius Robinson or DeGene still, had they still been on the board, they'd make sense as well. A couple corners I would consider, including Rake Straw Jr. from Missouri, but I think Holmes is a build through the trenches guy, and that's what the Lions will do here. Speaking of Brad Holmes, some quotes. He says on the uniforms tonight, you guys are going to love them. I love them. Mm -hmm. On not giving anything away, he declined to really get into receivers and corners in this draft. He said they're both solid. Yeah, it's a deep draft in both of those positions. This is a quote that people are going to uh, you know, go back to because we've discussed the possibility about what are they going to do with 29. He says he's not afraid to trade back even with the fans waiting. He says we have to do the right thing for the organization. If it makes sense, if it lines up, we have to do the right thing. Quote, hopefully our fans will forgive us. And I think they will as long as that pick ends up paying out. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I think Brad Holmes has done a masterful job of setting expectations for the fans. What did he talk about with free agency this year? And, and he came through with it. It wasn't going to be that one big fish. It was going to be a whole lot of players that they wanted to acquire, and it was the temperament of the players, it's the, the, the positions of the players, addressing some needs, and, and production of the players. And now he's setting the expectations yet again that if the opportunity presents itself, there is that possibility that even though it's hosted here in Detroit, we may not have a pick on day one. Roster construction as a contender. He says, I actually think you have more flexibility not being anchored into a need. And that's to your point, John, what he yeah. did in free agency. He didn't anchor himself. For, oh, we need a corner. We just have to take the best corner there. If the best corner is the best player, they'll take him. If it's a guard, if it's a center, if it's a receiver, if it's whatever, if it's an edge player, a defensive tackle, they'll take the best player on the board. And he feels like he set himself up to do that. Because uh, some people say when you're a contender, you only need one or two things. He goes, well, no, 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 I... Because yeah. I have a good football team, I don't have to take one or two one things. Or two things. Yeah. Exactly. And he says the biggest thing is having conviction in the pick. Yeah. And and I think we are all very aware of the conviction. We've seen all of the, the Lion's Den movies that they put out or clips, whatever you want to call them. They kind and of feel like movies. The, the excitement that went into picking Penny Sewell, Aiden Hutchinson, Jamison Williams, 
and then last year of being able to get Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell in the first round. Like all of those, you could see genuine excitement in that room. Gator, we had a moment on the two Grand Slam that was pure Karshian. So I want to play that. Doug is not yet in here. I don't know if he's going to be in here. No, we got to, we got to, we got to, get, got to get Gator to get his ears on. Uh, yeah, we'll let Gator get his headphones on so we can hear this. But the two Grand Slam today, our contestant won 75 bucks. <laughs> Got the first two right, and mm-hmm. then navigated a minefield of passing. He got a movie question. I'll tell you this. The rule, we're not supposed to tell the contestant if they get the question right or wrong, but Heather could not help herself. This is the exchange. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> he had passed once. He came back to it. This was him. <laughs> Every time I love it. His response is pretty good. I like it. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh dear. Denzel Washington? Yes. Would have been an interesting role for Denzel. It yeah. Have. Yeah. yeah. Would have had to, I mean, Clarence instead of Clarice. Yep. That's exactly. <laughs> maybe he was, uh, you know, I, I saw last night, late last night, The Equalizer was on. And oh, so maybe it's a he great was, movie. It really great is. series. Yeah. Love all three of them. Um, so I haven't seen the third one. I saw the first two. I Should. really like. I, Denzel's a badass in, 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 in lots of movies, but in that one in particular. Oh, so Doug, you got to. Yeah, we're going to have to play this for Doug. This, this is, is worth this it. This is very. This is totally worth very it. Very Doug Carr. And then we'll get into what you guys got coming up. But yes, Doug, two grand slam today. Guy won 75 bucks. Would have been 100, but he pulled a Doug Karsh. <laughs> <laughs> With what? My man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is so great. You've explained to the audience that that's my answer to every movie yes. question. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And and, 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 it's, and it made it even more funny because obviously Clarice was Jodie Foster. Foster. So um, out of curiosity, Doug. Yep. Do you realize when you said my man that you just went out to Denzel Washington? Did I? That's that's his that's his famous line in movies. Is it? My man. My man. Oh, I didn't know my that. Man. Didn't know my that. man. American gangster. It's mm-hmm. my, man. my man. Yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> no well, way. <yeah. laughs> really? No way. So besides paying you, off, by the way, you heard I watched an Academy Award nominated movie on our flight to and from San Diego. What'd you Which watch? One? It I, I, it was excruciatingly boring. It was so bad. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Oh, I I kept, so was it the it. season fall or actually falling? It, it's 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 a it's kind of a mystery about the death of somebody who falls, but I. <laughs> I, I, I went online to search for, okay, I completely missed it. And then I read about it. I'm like, no, I didn't. Nobody else got it either. It just sucks. Yeah. But it was up for best picture. It was? Who yeah, was in it? I, um, I Denzel it. Washington. Nobody, yeah, yeah. Nobody <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, it's all, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's nobody you've heard of. It's how about subtitles. this? Subtitles. So Gator's oh. never going to Oh, it. no, absolutely not. I'm with you on that. Did you see Parasite? I did. I, I did. Parasite. Me too. Parasite, was, Parasite was good. It's yeah. good. Yeah, Parasite is, in fact, I actually watched the, uh, the last 20 minutes of it um, a few nights ago, it was on. I was like, yeah, I got it. I mean, that's when it all heats mm-hmm. up. It gets nuts in the last it's a great 20 movie. minutes. You said a lot of football today? Yep. And I think so, I think something's making its glorious return today. We'll get to that right out of the gate. Carson Anderson next, 97.1.
All right, Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97. Want a ticket? Happy Thursday, everybody. One week from the National Football League draft. This is an event where all the NFL professional teams get together and select players that are leaving college and are eligible to become professionals. Where's that this year? It is being held in Detroit, Michigan, my friend, in Detroit, Michigan. And you want to go? I think. <laughs> do I want to go? Oh, I'll be there. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, double shifting on Thursday. We are going all in for the DRAFT, and Gator and I will be down there 10 to 2. I think it's 10 to 2, 10 to 2, 10 to 2, 10 to 12 40 because it's an afternoon game next Friday. Uh, we're going to be there from 8 to midnight on Thursday. Um, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. And I'm looking forward to it. How was your uh, Wednesday night? I was fine. Um, you know, when Tigers play day games, uh, you I kind of feel a little empty at night because I look forward to during baseball season to watch games at night. But, um, you yeah, know, it was fine. I got to catch up with some stuff that I had uh, recorded earlier in, the, earlier in the week. Got to see the uh, the gentleman Chris Adams, professional wrestler, former professional wrestler, uh, documentary on Dark Side of the Ring. Watch that one. It's uh, that was <laughs> that was a rough life. Yeah, um, that he lived. Uh, interesting story. Uh, how how he died. Um, yeah, kind of attacked a guy he was used to live with. Uh, who he was on hard times. And his old buddy said, well, "Why don't you you know you can come stay with me for for the night if you need to, whatever." And then he ends up attacking him. At least that's one of the stories. But his family doesn't believe it. Family thinks there were shenanigans. Family thinks the guy murdered him. And the guy who uh, pulled the trigger of a gun said it was self-defense. He attacked me, bit my face, bit my neck, um, and was trying to choke me out. Very interesting. Uh, the Dark Side of the Ring, I think this is season three or season four, maybe it was season four, that they've done all these uh, documentaries, like 10 a year. This has been the worst season of it. Yeah, the stories are still interesting. I just don't know if you need to make a full-blown documentary on it. This one was probably the best one of the season so far. Yeah. Yeah, so I got to watch that. Gotcha. Good. Glad to hear it. So today, Gator, something might make its glorious return. I'm almost sure. Is it me going to the gym? <laughs> no. Are you? No, no. Oh. It's like the joke. My, my triumphant return. Yeah. No. Not happening? Not today. Kang, any guesses on what makes its glorious return today? Uh, no, I have none. Drawn a blank. Well, you created it. I did? Yep. Oh, wait a minute. Are we doing like the Step Brothers thing with Evan? No. Oh. No, that was fun. We well, might I feel like I would have known about that, Gator, yeah. just because yeah. <laughs> for show purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes maybe we'd like to surprise you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was a fun one. We should do that again. We should do that again. Maybe in the summer. Yeah. Any what guesses? Is what is it? Well, I'll give you a clue. Today is a Thursday. Oh, are you doing it? Is it? Is it ready? Is it time? Does it need it? It does. Hashtag Thursday Mo. That's right. Yeah. Oh my God. It's back. <laughs> I was looking at my lawn too thinking, do I need to? Do I need to? Can I wait another week or two? So I, I was wondering about waiting a week, but there's 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 a require for me. There's one of the requirements for hashtag Thursday Mo is it's got to be a nice day. I want it to be sunny out. So when I get out of work, I'm gonna have some time uh, before I gotta get get to about the business of fathering and stuff. And so uh, if it's sunny, Thursday Mo comes back. I'm fired up about it. You have a, so you haven't mowed yet, right? No, uh, uh-uh. Gator. How's your lawn looking? Uh it's starting to get uh, a little, uh, little patchy. Uh, with with when I say patchy, I don't mean like dirt patches. I mean like it's some areas are growing where others haven't grown as much, but it's all full. It needs it needs to be mowed probably soon, but I wouldn't do it today because of all the rain we've gotten. So until. Uh, until the rain starts to, you know, the water level starts to go down a little bit, I, I'm, I'm going to encourage the guys not to do it. Although, who knows, when I come home today, it could be in my yard taking care of it. Well, it's it's it was a theory that Ken came up with that it's great to have your lawn looking spectacular over the weekend. You get it out of the way early. 
I've got the the battery all charged up, ready to zip around and uh and mow get my first mow in of the year. So if it's good weather today. I appreciate the Thursday mow. That's supposed to be good. Yep. Supposed to be like sixty five. Yep. That sounds like good mowing weather. It sounds like good mowing weather. The problem is, is it? Dry? Is it I, I mean, one of my it's, it includes one of my favorite beers, which is post mo beer. But I'm not going to do that because I have a hockey game tonight and I can't skate as it is, let alone with a beer in me. I had my first shandy of the year last week. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also coincided with my first tequila and limeade of the year. Oh, it must have been a good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't do it. What was the occasion? A buddy of mine. Uh, my friend Andy's uh, 50th birthday party. So yep. over at his house, I brought over uh, some beer and then noticed there was tequila and limeade. I'm like, oh, well, hello, my old friend. Mm-hmm. And I uh, went to that like a horse to water. And then, uh, yeah, I grabbed one of those shandies that I brought over. And, yeah. So it's tequila and what? And Limeade. Limeade. Gotcha. With, uh, with a fresh lime adorning right. it. Or you could use lemon, too. Okay. Well, I'll update you tomorrow. What do, do you have a frog issue still? So toads, yeah. Toads, and, yeah, um, and <laughs> they come and they go. And yesterday I was walking out to get the mail and I saw my first toad of the year too. And I'm like, damn it. Because I don't want to run them over with the mower. Dude, no one wants to. And, no and, wants to. and so I will, I will go out of my way to like shoo the thing with my foot. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. And I'm like, this is for your own good. But then you realize you're doing that for literally like 2,500 toads that are in your backyard. So there have been times where it it it, it will take me hour plus to mow, and we don't we don't have a tiny yard. I mean, it's not a postage stamp, but it's it's not huge either. So typically, I could be done 30 to 40 minutes. But some of those toad mows where I was really mm. shooing, and there were a lot of them, they could take an hour because you just keep stopping and. And you're trying to get them to jump the right way. I already mowed over there. Jump that way, not the direction I'm going. You got to jump to the previously mowed grass. I'm like, we've done, we did this last summer. Don't you remember from last summer? Haven't you been trained? But I guess it slips. Where do they go over the winter time? Uh, they die. Well, how is this? I don't, I don't, I don't know. They go into uh, into mud holes. Flo- I don't, I don't Florida, know. obviously. Yeah, they, right? <laughs> Boca. Yeah, uh, right. That's where they go. Key West. I don't know. Into the belly of a snake. All right. We got a seven rounder with trades, and we are one what? week away. With trades. Do the Lions pull the trigger on a deal? <laughs> we'll get to that today at 1018 here on Carson Anderson on 97 won the ticket.
right, we're going to audible. <laughs> we're going to get to seven rounder with trades. But it appears that the Detroit Lions, New Jersey's, have been leaked. Uh, Justin Rogers, who covers the Detroit Lions, uh, is tweeted out that uh, they've apparently been leaked by a third party. And he writes, the tough thing about what's, what, have you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him. I'm looking at him right now. He writes, the tough thing about holding your new uniform for an unveiling is keeping all third-party corporate partners in line with the launch when there is l- so little oversight with those. Fanatics ad leaked through USA Today Network appears to show the Lions' new-look jersey. So an a ad for Fanatics. Boy, Fanatics is making friends everywhere these days. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> They're the ones responsible for the new Major League Baseball gas station knockoff jersey looks. Uh, Fanatics ad leaked through the USA Today Network appears to show these Lions jerseys. We asked, do you want subtle or bold? Like, it is as far as change? Gator, I think this would be described as subtle. I think you would be right. Very subtle. Although it does look like there's a, an alternate jersey. The, yes. The, the, uh, the black one, which... Mm-hmm. Okay, looks I I'm I like a black jersey. It's fine, but I would not categorize this as anything other than subtle. If if you want to see it, uh, we've tweeted it out at Dungator nine seven one. It is, I mean, the striping down the sleeves. I it just envision the Lions uniform. I, I would say that this is slightly different number font. Is the number different, or is it the 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 font for Detroit it says one of them says Detroit on the front, one of them says Lions on the oh, front. I gotta go find. And it's the octagonal O versus the oval O. O. Last year, the the stripes on the jerseys, on the on the arm sleeve said Lions on in in the stripe. Okay. This does not. Um. The the numbers look like a different font. Um, I mean, this is about nothing, a, I, this is pretty damn subtle. Yeah, I don't think it's off putting at all. No, the the blue the blue home jerseys actually last year had silver numbers that I don't believe were outlined. These have white numbers with a silver outline on a blue back. Yeah, this uh, you know what I <laughs> I mean the, the name that popped in my head when I saw this was this looks like what Spindler wore. Our old friend Mark Spindler. Like that era Lions jersey is what it looks Kinda. like to me. Yeah, it, it it's different but subtle. Cuz it's subtle. definitely different, but unless you maybe re, you know just hey, you had this photographic memory of what the Lions jersey looked like last year, you'd know right off the bat, but you'd have to have them like price, you know, side by side, but it's definitely different. Like there's a uh, the stripes on the sleeves Last year they had uh, the William Clay Ford thing and Lions mm-hmm. on the side. WCF, the yeah. yeah, the WCF. But this year they don't. They don't have Lions or the WCF. So there's no tail. What do you mean? Well, that would have been something quite different to to add like a tail to the jersey. <laughs> this, no, Gator. There's not. There's a, no there's radical not a, There's not a tail. No there's tail. No, there's no actual mane. There's like no claws. Yeah, there's no 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 fangs. Uh, feedback is varied. Uh, I, and some, <laughs> some think they're cool. Some think they suck. It, it's really to me much ado about nothing. One thing yeah. that is kind of cool that I think I like is inside the numbers. It looks like a mesh, like they've dotted it, like it's a mesh look. So it looks a little different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah. I like it's corrugated almost, but yep. it's, yeah, but I, I, probably the most radical thing is that there is a black Lions jersey with blue numbers and a silver outline. And then the other thing is different on the inner collar that you'll never see. Um, on the white jersey has a three one three. On the black jersey, it says Motor City, hmm. which is kind of cool if it's hanging up. But you know, nobody will ever see. Nobody's that. ever going to see it. And the blue one says One Pride. Does it? Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah. the, the picture I saw doesn't show that. But. Well, the one, the <laughs> it should be the road jersey that says 313, not the home jersey. People know what area code they're calling Detroit. So that makes some sense. 
I don't know, man. I, I want to see the whole uniform, like with the pants and the, if there's any subtle changes to the helmet, but these appear, appear to be the jerseys. Again, you can check them out at Dungator971 on Twitch. Um, and we've got a lot of response quickly. Uh, Kay Frost writes in, I couldn't tell you what's different. <laughs> right. Uh, Aaron Gurdon says, I hate that they used all uppercase letters except for the N in Lions. Um, L-I-O-N-S. That is kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> On the black, is it the blue? Does the blue also say Lions? The black says Lions, and it's L-I-O-N, and then it's a lowercase N. All right, I don't. Hat Junkie says, I like it. Tyler says, these suck. Now uh, I can't unsee that. Egan says, honestly, are they are these different other than black? I seriously don't think anything has changed. Joe says, these are awesome. Exactly what I hope for. Block numbers like years past, but, um, but look modern. The black jerseys are so good. I need one. I hope they do the blue helmet with those. Chuck says, is this a joke? David says, no good. Altieri says, what changed? Nothing. Okay, cool. Thanks for the black alternate. They're, they're definitely different people. There's subtleties that you just people just don't remember as well the last gonna, year's yeah, jerseys. You're gonna, you, but does it change enough where you can say it I sucks? I like them. Yeah. I think, no, it doesn't I, no, suck. I, I, I mean, it's just like, don't be awful. That's all right. I ask, I guess. I it's, <laughs> it's, I fine. it's It's very, eh, very mid. So, in terms of a change. I mean, the it's, jersey itself is fine because the Lions jersey, well, I think, is a, is a good-looking jersey. So we, it's fine. You're not you're not going away from that. I mean, our topic yesterday was subtle or dramatic. I, I'm and getting, this is subtle. I'm getting a little triggered by that N right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, it bothers me. It bothers me more and more every second it's going past. Why? But it's always, why would you have a lowercase letter in the middle of a word that's spelled with nothing but uppercase letters? They did it last year too. <sighs> on the side, on the sleeve, it was li- written just like that. It's funny what Hills Gators chooses to die on. You didn't notice it last year. I didn't notice it last year but until that, something. Now somebody brings it up. I can't unsee it, and now I'm pissed. He's charging up the hill, people. He's charging up the hill. Not a, not a single letter elsewhere is like that, right? Yep. You know, look at the word Motor City written on the back. That's all uppercase. Mm-hmm. When it says, when they show Hutchinson's name on the back of the jersey, which happens to have some ends, the ends are uppercase, but the end in lion is not. Yeah. I don't get it. Yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to frustrate me. Well, this is being called uh, by Justin Rogers the new Lions uniform. So... Take it for what it's worth. It has been leaked by Fanatics, everyone's favorite, and it's just the jersey. It'll be interesting to see what they look like with the pants and the helmets, if there's any slight changes there. But we're getting a ton of response to these. So um, tonight the full unveil comes at 7 o'clock. So you can comment at Dungator971. Subtle. It's just subtle. It's reminiscent of the Spindler era. <laughs> Spindler is the guy I know from the era but uh, that I really think about. But uh, Spindler era, Pontiac, Silverdome kind of look. You know? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, there you go. Let's get to this mock. We'll take your comments. Continue to take your comments on the jerseys. It's Carson Anderson here on a Thursday. One week from the draft, did the Lions make a trade? Well... There's a mock with trades. This one could be very interesting. If it goes down this way, how would you play it? That today at 1032. Hey, trust me, having a new Connecticut water softener installed by CGC Water said so many benefits for our family. Call 855-339-4242. We did. Visit cgcwater.com as well and save more than $1,000 or more when you bundle Connecticut Premier Softener and the Connecticut K5 drinking water system, which I fill up my water bottle with. Every single day, if you're not filtering your water, you are the filter. Don't be the filter. Don't forget, April showers can bring flooded basements. Let CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing take care of your plumbing needs. CGC Water, your authorized, independent Connecticut dealer.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Tigers lose yesterday to Texas 5-4. I feel like it's kind of important to get the sweep, <laughs> or the split, excuse me. Sweep would have been better. Um, but yes, they get the split. And just uh, just play with the big boys. Their formula that has worked for them, they did not use that formula yesterday. <laughs> we'll no, that. no, they didn't. <laughs> Pitch and defense. <clears throat> Pitch and defense. Um, well, they pitched pretty well. They did. They did not defend well, that at the level didn't. that they had. No, um, no, they did not. But anyway, uh, so the New Jerseys, the New Lions jerseys are out if you want to check them out. Um, at Dungator971. And mixed reviews. It's very subtle. I think the blue might be a little bit lighter. I think it looks like I think it looks like a nineties era Lions jersey. Maybe the the most distinct difference is the numbers which have been silver for years are now white with a outline on the home jerseys. So uh you can you can check it out. All right, Gator, we don't um we don't do this every day like we used to. But we do like to look at the mock drafts. And here's a good one. It is a seven rounder with trades. Wow. From Dane Brugler of oh, the Athletic. Okay. I don't mind telling you who it is, but the trades could shake this thing up. The Lions make a deal. Let's take a look. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears go Caleb Williams, quarterback USC. At two, the Commanders go Jaden Daniels, quarterback LSU. At three, the Patriots, Drake May, quarterback. North Carolina. Other picks that might be interesting to the local crowd and could impact the Lions. We have a trade. The Vikings trade in a four? The Minnesota Vikings trade picks number 11, 23, and a 2025 third rounder to move up from 11 to four. And with the fourth pick, the Vikings select J.J. McCarthy, quarterback, Michigan. At five, we have a trade. Oh. The Cardinals trade again. They trade 11 and 35 to the Chargers for the pick at number five. So they can get Marvin Harrison? Cardinals select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. Other picks at positions that the Lions may want. The Giants at six take Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. At eight, the Falcons take Dallas Turner, edge rusher, Alabama. At nine, the Bears take Roma Dunze, wide receiver, Washington. Brock Bowers, the tight end from Georgia, goes 10 to the Jets. At 11, the Chargers now sit. They take J.C. Latham, the guard tackle from Bama. Uh, other picks of interest, the Raiders at 13 take Terion Arnold, cornerback, All right. Alabama. All right, okay. All right, here we go. 14? Uh, moving past 14 to 15, oh, 15. the Colts take Quinion Mitchell, Damn cornerback, it. Toledo. 15, though, huh? At 17, we have a trade. The Bills trade 28, 133, 144, and a 2025 second rounder to the Jaguars for number 17. So they move up 11 spots and select Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. All right. Dumb, dumb, dumb. At 18, the Bengals take Byron Murphy, defensive tackle, Texas. At 19, the LA Rams take Jared Verse, edge rusher, Florida State. <laughs> At 20, the Steelers take Graham Barton, center Duke. At 21, the Dolphins take Leatu Latu, edge rusher, UCLA. At 23 now, the Cardinals take Cooper DeGene, cornerback, Iowa. Damn it. At 25, the Green Bay Packers select Jackson Powers Johnson, interior offensive lineman, Oregon. Mm. At 26, Tampa takes cornerback Nate Wiggins, Clemson. At 27, Arizona takes Chop Robinson, edge rusher, Penn Come State. Come on! At 28, Jacksonville from Buffalo selects Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback, wow. Alabama. This is... So at 29, here's who's on the board for the Lions, Gator. I feel like throwing a chair. Defensive tackle, Jerjon Newton, Illinois. <laughs> Defensive end, Darius Robinson, Missouri. Yeah. Cornerbacks, Enos Rakestraw from Missouri, Kamari Lassiter from Georgia. Wide receivers, Adonai Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell from Texas. Keon Coleman, Florida State. Xavier Leggett, South Carolina. Xavier Worthy, Texas. Interior offensive lineman, Zach Frazier's on the board. 
Do you kind of have a lean here? I mean, I'd probably lean to either Frazier or Darius Robinson. Darius Robinson has the versatility of playing inside and outside on the defensive line, and Frazier's an interior offensive lineman. So, so you're mulling over those two. Ken, yeah. do you have a lean of these guys on the board at 29? Whatever Brad Holmes wants to do. Okay, yep. <laughs> well. I don't question the man. Kang bringing it strong. <laughs> no, I'm with Gator. Okay. The phone rings. Oh, the phone what? rings. They want Frazier? It's Las Vegas. It's Las Vegas calling. Is it Tanya Roberts? And Vegas wants the pick at 29. And they offer the Lions... 44, Big which crowd. is the 12th pick of the second round, and 77, the 13th pick of the third round. So the Lions it had to drop could, back 15 spots. could make a pick here at 29 or walk away with two picks in the second round, 44 and 61, and two picks in the third round, 73 and 77. I'd make the trade. Kang, would you make the trade? I'd really have to not like who's there. If you know what I mean. I gotta and, tell you, if Frazier's there, I think I, I might take Frazier. Okay, all right, fair enough. Because this draft, what's fascinating, doesn't it feel like the pool, the bucket got emptied right before the Lions picked? Yeah. I mean, the ten picks before, I think the Lions would all be interested in Byron Murphy, Jared Verse, Graham Barton, Leatu Latu, Cooper DeGene. Jackson Powers, Johnson, Nate Wiggins, Chop Robinson, Kool-Aid McKinstry. That's eight of the ten picks before they pick. Yeah, that's brutal. Um, and, and because I'm going to this thinking, I, I don't. I mean, I like some of the receivers, but I don't want to go that high for a receiver, even though those, those guys are worth it, you know, seemingly. Keon Coleman, Xavier Worthy, and others. Um, but no, I would still trade back. And my reasoning for trading back is because there's a duel of Michigan players that I'd actually like to have, which pains me to say. But but I like Sane Ristol and I like uh, Zach Zinner. And if I was going, let's say we took the lines we're going to look at uh, uh, at, at Jackson Johnson. Mm-hmm. Jackson Powers Johnson. If they were looking at him, is he going to play right away? No. Probably not. Um, he's a great insurance policy yeah, for yeah. a position that, well, that could kind of use one, and he's expected to be a future starter. Exactly. Yep. So it's about the future. So because I'm looking at it that way, I can take Zach Zinner, who, if he didn't break his leg, would probably be a first-round pick. He'd be first or second round for sure. So I'm thinking I'll use one of those second-round picks probably on him. If I have to, if I have to go that high, otherwise I get an early third round pick I can use on him. So that's my reasoning for trading back and getting and I'm getting an extra pick. So I'm underwhelmed with who's there. I understand your reasoning, Gator, but to take a interior offensive lineman that won't start a right right away because they have their starting offensive line already, that guy's one play away from being your starter. If you draft a receiver or a cornerback, those guys aren't one play away from being your starting receiver or corner. They have other corners and receivers. So I think the interior line is still very important. So if you want Jackson Powers, uh, um, Johnson, or, or Frazier, or whoever, or Zinter, that guy is close to playing in my book. Even well, though he's not starting right away. The other thing I don't know, because it's not like I've, I've I've got contact. I don't know how far away Zach Zinner is from from participating in a in a training camp. Okay, well, let's move on. Okay. Oh, moving the on. Lions accept the trade. Oh, okay. So, the Raiders move up, and at twenty nine, they take Michael Penix Jr., quarterback, yeah. Washington. Other picks of interest before the Lions, who now pick at 44. Jerjon Newton, defensive tackle, Illinois, goes 31 to San Francisco. Adnai Mitchell, wide receiver, uh, Texas, goes to Kansas City at 32. First pick of the second round, Carolina takes Lad McConkey, wide receiver, Georgia. Oh, laddie. The Chargers at 35 take Chris Jenkins, defensive tackle, Michigan. Interesting, the Chargers would not take a wide receiver. At 37, the Chargers take Keon Coleman, wide receiver, Florida State. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> 38, the Titans go Marshawn Nealand, edge rusher, West Virginia. 
At 39, TJ Tampa goes to Carolina, oh. Iowa State corner. Oh, boy, Enos, Enos Rakestraw goes 40 to the Commanders. Here we go, Corner Kang. from Missouri. 41, Darius Robinson, defensive lineman of Missouri, goes to the Packers. At 42, the Texans take Mike St. Ristol, corner Michigan. Oh, that hurts a little bit. Lions are on the clock at 44, and the player Kang would have taken at 29 is still available. Yep. Still available. So Zach Frazier's there, huh? Yes. So is Xavier Worthy, wide receiver, Texas. Javon Bullard, safety, uh, Georgia. Mason Smith, defensive tackle, LSU. Defensive tackle, Ruke Aroro from Clemson. Hey, Ro. It's actually Aroro Ro. There's three rows. Aroro Ro. Which is amazing. Like my name. dog when she wants to treat. Aroro Ro. Ro. <laughs> So at 44, you're on the clock. I mean, are you sprinting to the to make the pick, Kang? I am. Yeah, I, I am know, too. I'm with I you mean, on this. You know, I was I was thinking I could bypass this and I could I could wait. You know, but if the guy's healthy and I'm ready to go, okay, get him, Zach Frazier. You take that. You would take yeah, Zach Frazier under the I circumstance. Would. Kang, you would take Zach Frazier under yep. the circumstance. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep moving forward here because the Lions have a bunch of picks now after accepting this trade. I want everyone to make their pick. Who would you take? You know who's off the board. I told you who was available. Every time I give you a list of who's available, I mention who the pick is. So you know it's coming from this pool of players. Zach Frazier, interior offensive lineman, West Virginia. Xavier Worthy, wide receiver, Texas. Javon Bullard, safety, Georgia. Mason Smith, defensive tackle, LSU. And Ruke Arororo, defensive tackle, Clemson. We will continue with this. If you want to see the Lions' new unis, apparently they've been leaked Fanatics put an ad out. They continue to impress everyone everywhere. Uh, you can see them at Doug Gator 971. The comments, I don't know if we've seen, I've seen this many comments this quickly on any tweet we've ever sent, except maybe that dumb one with me in the hat on opening day. And uh, it's uh, th- those new uniforms that are leaked, that are the alleged new uniforms. Yeah. Been confirmed by the Detroit Lions. They are the uniforms. Okay. And now it's just the jersey top that they have leaked so far. The, any changes to the pants and helmets or socks or anything else? What color is the face mask going to be? None of that has been leaked at this point. So you can check it out at Dungator971. We'll continue with this mock and see what the haul would be for the Lions if they make this trade that Dane Brugler suggests that they do. It's Carson Anderson, 97-1, the ticket. Hey, the Detroit sports calendar is full. You got... Baseball, you got the draft coming up. Pick up your favorite Stoli Vodka flavor and pair it with a refreshing lemonade to enjoy while you watch. Make it the summer of Stoli. Celebrate with a Stoli blueberry and lemonade or maybe try a Stoli vanilla espresso martini. No matter what your drink of choice is, remember Stoli for your premium vodka. Whether it's at a game or in your backyard patio or rooting for your favorite player to be drafted, Stoli Vodka has you covered. Pick up a bottle of Stoli Vodka today. And as always, Stoli asks that you please drink responsibly.
All right, we got a lot of work to do here. Yeah. A lot of heavy lifting with a seven round mock, and the Lions have traded out of the pick at 29. Let me start with this. Brad Holmes basically said that. Hang on. I feel like I should get my pen out. You should get your pen out. Pen is out. Okay. Did you actually bring a pen into the studio today? On your own? Because usually it's like, hey, do you have a pen I can borrow? I now have gotten smart. Which which, which I swear to God is you in high school. Is it, Keg, don't you, every time I come in here and he goes, hey, do you got a pen I can borrow? I feel like this is Gator in high school in every class. That's not true. You brought you brought pens. To, pe- you probably brought pencils to class, right? Uh, both, yeah. yeah. I mean, I no, you in. didn't. I did. In fact, I told, <laughs> I told the story before how when I was at Michigan State, I took a – Class in summer school that uh, there were a couple of basketball players in the class. We're getting ready for the final. Didn't see these guys all, all class or you know all all uh, semester long, and they show up for the final. And I sit down, and and both basketball players sit on either side of me, and one of them turns, looks at me, and goes, "Yo, big fella, you got a pencil?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man, here you go." I guess I had an extra one. I was prepared. Mm-hmm. What I've decided, but during my broadcasting career, no, I'm, I'm not. But here's what I decided to do. Right, I'm not prepared at all. <laughs> here's what I decided about two weeks ago. Honest to God. In the bag that holds my headphones, which we bring in and out of the studio every day, I've decided to put a pen in the bag. So we're going on 19 years here. 18. We're, 18, we're in our 18th year. And my man. Of doing our show together, yes. So we've, I don't know how many thousands of shows that is. It's a lot. I mean, are we pushing like, like seriously, like twenty five thousand shows? No, twenty five hundred shows. Three down. Uh, yeah, over that. Figure not twenty five thousand. Twenty five hundred, two hundred and something a year. I and so anyway, and and in the last week, you've decided to bring a pen into the studio with you. That's right. <laughs> you can te- you can teach an old dog new tricks. Well, for the longest time in the studio, there would be pens everywhere, right? On the floor. Remember, you used to look down the floor, and there'd be like seven pens at your feet because that's just where they went. I don't know why they'd go there, but that's where they'd go. And then over the last year, I think since they redid the studio, we haven't seen that, (laughs) the influx of pens or writing utensils on the floor. So... And if we're on, if we're doing a remote, and if it's like if I have my a jacket with me, I'll always have a pen because I can keep a pen in my in my pocket. But if it's during the summertime, and I'm not bringing a jacket, then I generally don't. So I just I'm I, to be I, I get the sense that uh, you know whatever it is, thirty five hundred shows something like that after after thirty four hundred nine hundred and ninety two of those shows, he decides I better start bringing a pen into the studio. Oh. It wasn't like a, I better or else. It wasn't one of those things. It was just like, you know what? It would be nice if I had my own pen. So here well, I you have no longer pen. have to borrow a pen from That's me. right. Yeah. That's right. So All right. Good to know. Uh, so he's got a pen because we're going to do some heavy lifting. Let's get back to this draft. So you two both took Zach Frazier, interior guard at 44, after the Lions traded back with the Raiders. Other picks of interest. Xavier Worthy goes next pick to New Orleans. Ah, uh, Cooper Beebe, the interior offensive lineman for Kansas State, goes to the Bengals. I guess you don't care. You're not taking him anyway. Roman Wilson goes to the Steelers at 51. Javon Bullard, safety from Georgia, goes to the Eagles at 53. Mason Smith, DT from LSU, goes to the Browns at 54. Other picks of interest. Edrin Cooper, the linebacker from Texas A&M, goes to the Packers at 58. I'm assuming Bo Nix has, has been selected. Yes, he has. He went to the Rams at 52. I skipped over that. Uh, Ruke Ororo, the defensive <laughs> tackle from Clemson, goes to the Texans at 59. And the Lions are on the clock at 61 here. Okay, Here's 60. who's on the board. Corner Andrew Phillips from Kentucky. Defensive tackle Braden Fisk from Florida State. Wide receiver Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Edge rusher Adisa Isaac, Penn State. Safety Tyler Newbin, Minnesota. One of those is the pick. To pair with what you did and what you took at 44. Gator, you know what you want to do? I think so. Um, I don't know enough about the corner from Kentucky. Okay. I feel like I know a little bit about Tyler Newbin. I like Tyler Newbin. Safety, Minnesota. So that's who you're taking? Yeah. Gator goes Tyler Newbin. Kang, who are you taking here at 61? I'm taking Xavier Leggett, Josh Reynolds' replacement, big receiver. Uh, I think he's a 
give him time to grow, of course. You got Jamal stepping in, Khalif Raymond still there, you know, DPJ, all the other guys, but I'll Xavier really get here. Okay, we will continue moving into the third round because the Lions now have an early third round pick after the trade with Vegas. Players that go off the board, Dari- uh, Brandon Darius, defensive lineman from Oregon, goes with the second pick of the third round of the Cardinals. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Who else here that is interest? Blake Corum goes to the Chargers at 69. Nice. No way, the Chargers. Uh, the Lions are on the clock at 73. Here's who's on the board. Kamari Lassiter, cornerback, Georgia. Chris Braswell, edge rusher, Alabama. Mm. Jalen Polk, wide receiver, Washington. Mm. And Kalen Carson, cornerback, Wake Forest. When is their next pick after 73? 77. Okay, so I feel good about getting probably two of these guys here. But I'm going to go with... um, I'm going to go Braswell. Okay, Gator goes edge rusher Chris Braswell from Alabama. Kang, who you take? I agree, but I can't. Uh, Jalen Polk would have been, you know, that would have like been Jaylen another. Polk, yeah, yeah, that's a receiver I could have taken over Leggett, to be honest with you. But since I already chose my receiver, I'm going Braswell as well. Okay, so Gator goes Braswell. And Kang goes Braswell. We continue. Well, lines are on the clock. And Lassiter goes to the Falcons at 74. Uh, here's who's on the board at 77. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Roger Rosengarden, tackle from Washington. Makai Wingo, defensive tackle from LSU. Braylon Trice, edge rusher, Washington. And Kalen Carson, cornerback, Wake Forest. Uh... It's interesting because I already took Braswell, so I don't need Trice. Um, BPA. Yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not going to double tap in the uh, third round here. Who is the uh, the guy from uh, Wake Forest? The defense. Kalen Carson. Kalen Carson. Okay. Kang, who would you take under these circumstances? I'm taking Kalen Carson, but I hate doing this because I don't know how Brad Holmes operates. He might double tap. He does not care based on position. Gator and I, are, I feel like we're effectively drafting a lot on a position here. If Trice is there and they like him almost as much as like Braswell, or whatever, I could see him doing two defensive I, ends. Honestly. I understand, but here here's the issue I have with him doing. I I agree he can do a double tap at any time. I would have an issue if he did a double tap here because they've already brought in Marcus Davenport in the off season. They decided to bring to bring it back, James Houston. You know, I just I don't know if they need to double tap that position. I totally agree with you. I don't you know necessarily think they would do that, but my point is. I'm, I'm falling into the trap that yeah. everyone but does. Brad Holmes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad Holmes and, would do what Brad Holmes do. Yeah, and then we're just basing it off on position. But with that being said, I'm taking the defensive back, Kalen Carson. <laughs> All right, so to be clear here, Vegas traded 44 and 77 to the Lions for 29. Gator, your haul under this mock is Zach Frazier, interior offensive lineman, West Virginia, Tyler Newbin, safety, Minnesota. Chris Braswell, edge rusher, Alabama. Kalen Carson, cornerback, Wake Forest. That's correct. Kang, yours is Zach Frazier, interior offensive lineman, West Virginia. Xavier Leggett, wide receiver, South Carolina. Chris Braswell, edge rusher, Alabama. And Kalen Carson, cornerback, Wake Forest. Anybody that played along at home, we try to set this up so you can play along at home. If you want to text over your Hall of Four, Please do so now at 2485-399797, and we'll tell you who the picks are coming up today at 11.05. Yes, sir. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> it's Carson right. Anderson. I'm going to put my pen back in the bag. <laughs> there it goes. Unless I need it later on. I'll grab it. It's, it's yeah. right here. It's in the studio. Doug. He's it's this convenient. close to asking, hey, Doug, do you got a piece of paper I could write on? Hey, big fella, you got some paper? <laughs> Hey, big fella, do you got the answers? Was that the next question? Uh, no, but they were they were one hundred percent cheating off me. Uh, <laughs> I looked over, I was thinking about it. And they're and cheating I, off you. They were absolutely one hundred percent cheating off me. I was being uh, so. If we look back at any profiled. players that were in el- ineligible yeah. at their careers, at well, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm like doing it so at your own peril. But I did, I did. Uh, 
do okay in the class. So if they cheated off me, they passed. The NBA play in tournament gives teams a chance to play their way into the postseason. So it only seems right that new customers on FanDuel can play their way into 150 bucks. Just place any five dollar bet. And you'll get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, to use during the NBA playoffs. So, look at these playing games. Miami at home, a point and a half favorite over Chicago. But Sacramento on the road is a point and a half favorite at New Orleans. So, New Orleans at home getting a point and a half. Take a look. Play how you want to play. Visit Fandle.com slash Doug to get started. That's Fandle.com slash Doug. You can also bet on things like three-pointers made, over-under on points, first basket score, stuff like that. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or over and present in Michigan. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit is required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help. Brought to you by Ben and Adi Pools. Yes, the Lions picked number 29 in the first round of next week's draft. And yes, they could trade with a week to go. Lions VP Brian Holmes says that in order to move up, it would have to be a great fit for the team, not just talent. And also answered the hypothetical on if they moved back from 29.
Yeah, Holmes also says that he thinks the fans are going to love the new uniforms that will be unveiled tonight. However, seems they're kind of already out there. Fanatics uh, seems to have leaked them, showing them early on social media. And if you're questioning the validity, the team even released a response video with Ali McNeil basically saying, yeah, thanks for ruining the surprise. Tigers baseball this afternoon has been a slog in the early innings. Uh, the hits have been coming exclusively in the late innings, or at least the runs and during required comebacks. Something manager A.J. Hinch is hoping to rectify, though he's happy his team is fighting so hard through all nine innings. Kenta Maeda is in line to start, and it's the homestand finale against the Rangers with the pregame right here on 97-1 at 1245. Also, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reporting that research at Pitt for bedside blood concussion tests have been approved by the FDA, possible game changer for NFL players who suffer brain injuries during games and need to be in league protocol. From the Corwell Health Sports Desk, I'm Chris Falar. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket and Odyssey.com. Well, looky here. Who just wandered into the studio? I'm Chris Villar. <laughs> <laughs> it's our guy, Tony Ortiz. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm great. Great. Not much. Well, I thought about you guys. Well, actually, I thought about you guys for two reasons. All right. One is I've been watching a lot of Toronto Blue Jays baseball games, and my wife has absolutely disgusted with the voice of Buck Martinez. Oh, I And so Buck I immediately Martinez. thought of Gator. She I don't understand he sounds- <laughs> why she doesn't like Buck Martinez. She thinks he sounds like an old-time gangster from a 30s movie. She's right, and that's why he's great. And the thing about Buck Martinez... Better stick both arms up in the air before you find yourself in trouble. Buck Martinez... I turned, got a six-shooter. My favorite thing about Buck Martinez is the way he pronounced Casey Mize. The Casey name Mize, Mize. He turned it into like a three-syllable <laughs> name. Mize. Mize. Uh... So new uniforms. You, you, do, how many years did you do Lions sidelines? Fifteen years. Fifteen years, and fully ensconced in the organization. And uh, what do you think of the new uniforms? I like the new uniforms, but I'm a little more excited the fact that they actually kind of brought back the black uniforms. Yeah, yeah. You, I was, you were like, a fan of the black. I like the black uniforms. They were a different look for the Lions, mm-hmm. and I thought this is not a bad looking uniform. Yeah. Well, I think we need to keep this in mind because I know people don't people that don't like them associate with the Millen era, right? Let's remember this. That's not why the team was bad. Right? <laughs> yeah. Correct. The jerseys were not why the team was bad. Yeah, you really let <laughs> Millen off the hook. Bad, right. The oh, team no, he was doesn't bad get let because off the, the, uh, yeah. the GM was the worst in, in the history of all of sport. Agreed. Yeah. Although some people are giving him a run uh, until they get fired. But, yes, that's uh, that's why they were bad, not because of the jerseys. I, I'm glad they brought the black jerseys back, too. I do like the look. Mm-hmm. I think it's a nice change up every once in a while. I can't wait to see how they mix and match them with the new helmet they introduced last year. We yep. love the new helmet. I love that helmet. I wish they'd use it more than just once a year, but it's okay. Anything else going on in your world that we need to get caught up on? Nope. Uh, just getting ready for the draft next week, um, and that's about it. Don't me. you owe us still a shoot the boot? I do. Yeah. yeah. I do. Yeah, that's... Oh, we should have had that beer ready for it. Yeah, it's only eight years ago. <laughs> Eight years in one national championship ago. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, anytime I uh, will pay off to shoot the boot. Really? Yes. You're going to be at the draft? I will be at the draft. I will be at Hockey Town. Yeah, okay. We, I don't know if we're going to be at Hockey Town. No, we're, we're not. not. No. You have to come by our broadcast location. Done. Yep. Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. I can get some Wild Wings while I'm there. Yes, you yeah, can. And maybe throw up a beer. There you go. All right, T.O., thank you. Maybe throw up a beer? I imagine if Tony throws it down quickly, there's always a, the, the chance it can come right back. Well, that's true. That is true. Good to see you, my man. It's good to see you guys. I miss you guys. Yeah, we miss you. You throw it up or you throw it down. <laughs> One or the other. That, my friends, Bye, guys. is Tony see Ortiz. Tom. Hopefully, uh, we can see more of Tony these days. Love Tony Ortiz. Okay. Um, you miss the Tony Ortiz back rub? What, like he'd walk in here and... Just start rubbing your shoulders? Oh, uh, it was good. Um, you a reporter at a Caitlin Clark press conference or something, Gator? Hey, that was what? Did I miss that? <laughs> oh, you didn't see it? No, oh, I did man. not. <laughs> Let me see if I have the sound. <laughs> what? You know how she does the heart thing to her family? Yeah. Yeah. One of the reporters asked her to do that basically to him. It was really do we have it? Yeah. We're getting really sidetracked here. I know. But what the hell? All right, here's sorry. It, what is it? We've confirmed it was who it's Greg it was. Doyle. Yeah. Greg Doyle from the Indianapolis Star. Let's hear it. Hey, 
He's doing the sign, the heart sign. What? That's that's, that's the creepiest thing I've heard in a while. What? Hi, Caitlin. (laughs) Hi. See this? I heart you. I'm just so glad you're here. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's something I do to, to my family. I know. Hopefully we can be family. You know what I mean? We can get married together. And live in the same house. I mean, do you, uh, have children. I don't stuff. know this guy, and I don't. This guy's been around. I know. I mean, I know the name, but I don't know him personally. It, it, he's is it is it just a really awkward and creepy joke? Is that what he was trying to? It was he's trying to tell a joke, and he. We had him on our show before. Did we? Like fifteen years. I ago. Think I was going to say way yeah. back when mm-hmm. we had this guy on. It had to be when the first year because we wouldn't have done get, we wanted to stop <laughs> doing guests. Yeah, right. being, yeah, it's almost basically, 18 years it's ago. basically like golf and occasionally Burkett. And that's he's a columnist with the Indianapolis Star, formerly a sport national sports writer for CBS Sports. I was going to say, remember, you used to go, that's why we went to his stuff all okay. the time because he was yeah. part of CBS Sports. Line. We were CBS at the time. Um, born in Hawaii, he grew up in Mississippi. Hmm. His father was a professor of law at, at Mississippi. Ended up going to University of Alabama, or I'm saying University of Florida. Well, look, this guy's all over the place, man. It's an interesting little bio. Grew up in Mississippi. Dad was a professor there. Attended high school in Georgia, and then went to University of Florida. All right, yeah. and creeped out Caitlin Clark and everybody else who heard it. All right, let's wrap Oof. up the mock. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> We told you about Alliance trade proposal. They would take this trade offer, according to Dane Brugler of The Athletic, and they'd pick at 77, I'm sorry, 44, 61, 73, and 77. They get four players in rounds two and three. We told you what the haul was for Gator and Kang, what they would do if the board fell that way. Would you have made that trade? Yes. Okay. Yep. Because, uh, honestly, mostly because eight of the previous 10 picks were players I wanted. <laughs> I mean, I, they, that's a, it's kind of a draft night. Not, it's not a nightmare for me. I'm sure Brad Holmes would be like, we got like six players in the bucket that we would take there. But for me, it emptied the bucket right before the Lions picked. And if I stayed there, I'd probably take Jerjon Newton, the defense attacker from Illinois. Here's what some people did. Jeff and Troy says, guys, Zach Frazier, did you see the video of him dragging himself off the field with a broken leg so his team wouldn't lose a timeout? That's a Campbell Holmes guy if there ever was one. It's a man right there. Jake in a van says, I took Frazier, Xavier Leggett, Kamari Lasseter, and Braylon Trice. Jay and Can says, the Lions select with pick 44, wide receiver Xavier Worthy, 61, defensive tackle Braden Frick, Fisk, 73, defensive end Chris Braswell, and 77, cornerback Kalen Carson. Now that sounds like like really good players, but it also sounds like somebody that made those selections after they saw what fleshed out. Maybe uh, from an unnamed texter, make the trade all day. I'm taking Frazier, Leggett, Lassiter, and Trice. We like you to make the pick in the moment, so you don't know who fell. Like Kang wouldn't have taken the trade and would have taken Frazier, only to find out Frazier was still on the board after he took the trade. But uh, the picks are in at. Let's see, the first pick at 44, okay? The Detroit Lions select Zach Frazier, interior offensive lineman, West Virginia. It's nearly unanimous. All right, so we can look forward to the video in the draft room of Brad Holmes Mm -hmm. high-fiving aggressively everybody in the room. You got it. At 61, the pick is in. The Detroit Lions select... Braden Fisk, defensive tackle, Florida okay. State. All right. They have two in the third round. At 73, the pick is in. The Detroit Lions select wide receiver Jalen Polk, Washington. Okay. At 77, the pick is in. The Detroit Lions select Kalen Carson, cornerback, Wake Forest. So there you go. And, of course, because it was a seven-rounder, there's still four more players for them to take. 
I will tell you who those four players are coming up at 11.15. We also got to talk about one of the biggest stories in sports that broke yesterday. We'll get to that at 11.20. Here on Carson Anderson on 97.1 The Ticket. Hey, spring is here, and so are the Silverados and Equinoxes. At your number one volume Chevy dealer in Michigan, Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights. And that means Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights has a huge inventory of Silverados and Equinoxes that are ready for you to test drive and take home today. Plus, it's truck season, so now's the time to get that Silverado you've been dreaming of. Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights, where they guarantee the lowest price or it's free. 17 and a half and Van Dyke in Sterling Heights. Call 87-SAY-SARAH or go to saysarah.com. Together, let's drive. Okay, so we've talked about the new Lions uniforms that got leaked by Fanatics. Thanks, Fanatics. Everybody loves you. And they are a subtle change. NFL Fashion Advice uh, tweeted out a Aiden Hutchinson, the old Hutch jersey and the new Hutch jersey. And we have tweeted out so you can see the difference. It is subtle, but they are different. 
for people who lived through the the nineties era Lions, you know, this is an Eric Kramer, Mark Spindler jersey, Willie Green kind of jersey is what it looks like. Willie Green. Well, I'm trying to think of guys. Ray Crockett. Yep. Big play, Willie Clay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyway. David Sloan, was he part of that era? I think Way he was. later. I think he was. He might have been later. But Early Robert Porsche. But, I mean, you see the jersey, and you can just see Rick Kane on a wheel route coming out of the backfield. Wow. Uh, anyway, NFL Fashion Advice tweeted a Hutch jersey, the old and the new one. I will say this about the new one. I, I actually, it is subtle, and I do like the throwback look. The numbers, numbers are better. The white numbers, they pop with the with the gray outline, and you can really see them. So that now, when an offensive lineman reports, you'll be able to tell more. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is the big difference, right? It's the white numbers. Yep. It's and the number is a different style, and I like the style of the number better, and it does show up better. Um. It, it does. It is a further and further departure of the Lions jersey that I've grown to know, though. Mm-hmm. It feels like so, but is it better? I think it is slightly. There is still some intrigue on the jersey reveal tonight at seven o'clock because all that fanatics leaked because they didn't want to f it up for everybody. Uh, but they probably will by the end of the day. Is the pants and the helmet? We don't know what the pants and the helmet look like. Well, maybe it's just a mix and match. What do you mean? Maybe you can. Do all different types of. Oh, I'm sure that they yeah. can, and they'll probably have the players modeling the different the different variations. Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it, it'll be released tonight. You can see the whole thing tonight at seven. Uh all right. So I mentioned that we get to the other four picks. Yes, they're, they're interesting. If anything else, and it was a Dane Brugler seven rounder with the Lions trade back for forty four and seventy seven with Vegas. Vegas moved back into the first round to take Michael Penix. The Lions get Zach Frazier, Braden Fisk, Jalen Polk, and Kalen Carson. So they go interior offensive line, defensive tackle, wide receiver, corner. <laughs> Their fifth round pick, Kang, you're going to love this. Braden McGregor, edge rusher, Michigan. There it is. He's called this. This is calling your shot, your mid round guy. Yes, sleeper pick. Yep. Uh, mine was Bo Braid, the safety from Maryland. Gator, I forgot. Who was your, your sleeper pick last week? Was it Tyler Newman, maybe? It might have been, yeah. Uh, sixth round, the Detroit Lions select kicker Will Reichard, Alabama. What about Bates? He'll be that's battling with question. Bates for the job. <laughs> what? Also in the sixth round, the Detroit Lions select safety Sione Vikai. The Taysom Utah, Hill of the, the draft? The Taysom Hill of this draft. Yes. Awesome. And in the seventh round, they take Johnny Dixon, cornerback, Penn State. No! I don't know anything about him. Just like react. I like the Riker pick. That guy watching warm ups at the Rose Bowl, I was like, holy cow. He was booming kicks. Like I try to watch kickers and see what they're good at and how comfortable they are out to I hope they're good at kicking. Yes, well, exactly. But I mean at what yard? They they all kind of warm up and they back up and fifty five. Let me tell you, it would have been good from fifty six. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was booming them through I felt like three quarters of the way up the goalpost from 55 yards. So well, that's a Mr. Michigan Panther kicker he's been doing. He has um, been trailing it. That's going to be quite a quite a battle at training camp. Bates versus Reichard. A frenzy. Who gets the services? I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet Reichard's off the board by the time the lines are on the clock. And what would I say, six round? At 201, they have two six round picks. He's good. He's legit. Uh, okay, let's get to something that broke yesterday. The the Jonte Porter story suspended for life by the NBA for gambling on NBA games, including giving up intel to friends of his and basically fixing his own totals. These are the player props. He bet under on, he had his friends betting under on his points, rebounds, and assists. He shows up to the game coming back from an injury, plays a few minutes, does nothing, checks out saying his eye injury has been, oh, he, you know, he re, re-aggravated his injury. Um, <laughs> according, and then a story that broke yesterday, not everybody heard it, but according to league findings, Porter relayed information to known sports bettors about his health status, allowing them to bet the unders on his prop bets. One better placed an $80,000 parlay that netted $1.1 in winnings. What? 
Porter made sure his prop bets went active by playing in the game, but also ensured they came in as unders by checking out as early by saying he felt ill. The large activity on Porter's unsurprising prop, um, uh, the large activity on Porter's unsurprisingly prop bet raised red flags uh, with sports books who flagged the activity suspicious and alerted the league. They also found he bet on at least 13 NBA games from January to March while traveling with the Raptors G League affiliate, including a parlay that included the Raptors losing. The parlay lost. In total, Porter won north of $21,000 on those NBA bets in full, which will certainly not cover the loss of a paycheck from playing professional basketball ever again. It's a uh, story um, posted on, uh, i got to find the source and give them credit. But anyway, the point is, we have had Jonte Porter, we had Shohei's interpreter, yep. a.k.a. Shohei himself, what do you mean? embroiled in controversy. I don't know. I want to see how this one plays itself out. I'm kind of being tongue-in-cheek. Um, leave him alone. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out, but we had that mess last month. We had Calvin Ridley, who got a year with the NFL. Of course, locally, we had J-Mo, who wasn't, I mean, he was placing bets on other sports, but he was doing it in violation of the league rules because of where he was doing which it. Which they now could have changed. Yeah, and, and they also, you know, obviously lifted the suspension early, which is cool, but um, and I, we talked about this about a month ago where I said, when I'm watching a game, it never once creeps into my mind that the game is fixed or that somebody's doing something and, and to, to manipulate props or point spreads or anything like that. And I asked the question, am I naive? And the thing was before betting was prevalent, people were telling me I was naive. So now that it is prevalent, I'm sure there's a great army of people that will tell me I'm naive. It still doesn't happen, but it's becoming almost clear that it should like this, this, when the when the JMO story came out, and remember the Athletic did that uh, that anonymous poll of NFL players, and there were a whole bunch of them scrambling to cover their tracks. It sounded like because they had violated similar rules to JMO, they just haven't been caught. Gator, I don't want this to ruin sports. Like. It, <laughs> It was like when the, the steroid thing came and it was like, oh, nobody believed Jose Canseco when he said 40% of the league is on steroids. And then a few years later, we all believe 40% might have been low. You know? Is this the trickle, trickle, drip, 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 and then it's a fire hose of news like this? I sure hope not. I mean, nobody wants to think that this is the, the, the sports, any kind of sport has been compromised because of this, but this was something we talked about from day one when it was proposed that we would legalize sports gambling outside of Las Vegas. So I, I it, it's, I'm not surprised that this has happened, but maybe I'm a little bit surprised that it hasn't happened more frequently. So I think it's a good thing. And maybe what this is telling us is that the safeguards they have in place are working um, because we haven't seen these things pop up all the time. We saw this one pop up. Yeah. And there are there were red flags. You know, when somebody puts an eighty thousand dollar bet, like what on a, on a little used player? Yeah. Porter, you okay for tonight? How's the eye? I'm straight, coach. Two minutes in the game. Ow! Mm -hmm. Got to come out, coach. It's acting up. It's all cloudy. I mean, we're trying to predict what's going to happen next, and I don't think it's going to turn into a fire hose of of gambling uh, accusations and. And rule violations. Because I would imagine, but Kang made the point yesterday, and we've talked about it in the past, a Jonte Porter, a fringe player, who's going back and forth between the league and the G League, is, the, not a is, piston. is the target. <laughs> That's the guy that somebody would try and get information from. Well, yeah, because, right. Because the player making money is not going to do this. Correct, because the risk is it's too big for it's too big for starting players in the NBA to take. The risk is too big. That wouldn't make any sense. Unless they're real degenerates, no. it wouldn't make any sense. And of course, look, that, that can happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, would be the first time a professional athlete got in trouble with gambling. Well, I mean, it, uh, let's face it, maybe the greatest ever flirted with it in, in Jordan. The gambling accusations oh, sure. his way, but they, they found that he didn't bet on NBA games. Uh, but they, they said, yeah. He was pretty notorious for being a, a Vegas guy. 
He and, liked action. I mean, yep. The man golfed all the time, and, and yeah. there was not a time he golfed without some kind of wager on the line. Anyone that's, that tells a story that has golfed with Michael Jordan says the man would not stop betting. That right? SNL skit still cracks me up. <laughs> it's like he just so that's where the I mean I don't think a big time player would do it, but there's the only way I think it would happen is if he, they were just addicted to the action. You know, they just could, couldn't help themselves because it's their competitive nature, right? It's not even about the money because Jordan had money. It's like I can't stop because it's fun. Right. I it need gives me the, the rush, rush. Of, yeah. yeah, all so, that. I mean, Barkley is notorious for his gambling outside of the game. Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson. Yeah. I mean, Phil might be the most notorious gambler of all time. When it Boy, comes would to that it. be a pretty easy thing for a professional athlete to manipulate a, go- a golfer to manipulate their prop yes, bets? But I, that that's yeah. With him, that's not where the the, the betting was. But all the golfers bet on themselves when it comes to games within the game, right? Yeah. I mean, you hear about that stuff all the time. Yes, but they but get against yeah, themselves. I think Phil was involved in other stuff. All right, Carson Anderson, open lines, 248-539-9797, won the ticket. Woo, it's getting nice out there. You want to make sure that you got your air conditioning ready to go. You want to make sure that you don't have any leaks in the basement. Listen, if you do... Don't be ashamed about it. Just fix it. The red, white, and blue trucks, they're on their way to help you out. That's Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Frank's the owner. He's got a great deal going on this spring. All customers will get a free tankless water heater included with the purchase of a full furnace and air conditioning package. So if you do have that flood in the basement, if you do have a, a cranky AC, make sure you get it taken care of. Call Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling today. You can schedule an appointment online at BirminghamPlumbingCO.com. Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Your Metro Detroit boiler experts.
So when you're sitting down and you're game planning your talk show in the future, people, one of the best things you do, you don't, you don't, you want to come up with topics that are sort of compelling and that people can debate a little bit. Like one of the topics shouldn't be something like, would you like Detroit to win tonight? Two, four, eight, five, three, nine, ninety seven. Like, like stuff that, that gets multiple answers. When we right. come up with a Twitter poll and we get, you know, close to 50, 50, we're like, that's a good question. Yeah, you got, people are, there's real split on this. There's a divide. When you come up with a Twitter poll and it's like 96, yes, four, no, Sometimes we do the approval ratings mm -hmm. just to see what they're at, but Kang came up with a good one today. Yeah. And uh, we have tweeted at, we've retweeted it, and we encourage you to go vote at Dungator971. And he just tweeted out, we're one week away from the NFL draft. What is most likely? The Lions stay at 29, the Lions trade up, or the Lions trade back? Uh, he put up for 24 hours, so you have uh, 22 hours left to vote. But we encourage you to go do it now so we can sort of see how the feedback comes in. Yeah. During the course of this radio program. And we're a week before the draft. Right now, Lions stay at 29, 31.3%. Lions trade up, 32.8%. Wow. Lions trade back, 35.8%. And this is why. This is one of the many reasons why he may be the best producer on the planet. He's got 30% across the board. Well done, my friend. Did you bring a pen into the studio with you? Can I borrow one, big fella? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you need to borrow it, I can let you borrow it. <laughs> uh, go vote at Dungator971 or at Kang Collects, which is the home of the Kang Collects podcast. What's on the podcast this week, by the way? This week, I've got a, a card shop owner that sells cards and candy in his card shop. And really? it's not just any candy. It's like exotic candy from other countries and things like that. But uh, Other country candy? Yeah, like, um, like a Kit Kat. Right here, you go to Kroger, you probably just get a regular Kit Kat. There... You might get a, a green tea Kit Kat or, or a kimchi Kit Kat. I don't know. Oh, or, you know, something like that. That'd be odd. Yeah. I got to tell you, when I was in Australia, because I've been to Australia. <laughs> by yourself. Yeah. I went by myself. Yeah. Uh, you know what the most popular candy bar was that everybody liked? What? Hmm. Hershey's. Snickers. The Mars Bar. Have you ever seen the Mars yeah. Bar? Yeah. A Mars bar is effectively, isn't it like a, it's like a Three Musketeers, I think it's it? like, I don't know what it's like. I mean, I, <laughs> it's actually like a Milky Way. Really. I can't remember what the Mars bar was, but that was the big thing. And, it, and across the border in Canada, the Aero bar, I'm a big fan of the Aero bar, specifically the mint one. It was very good. But You like mint. I do like mint. Our, to our Canadian friends love the Aero bar. Mars bar. And they all dress chips. Uh, caramel nougat. Coated with milk chocolate, mm, so okay. it's effectively it's it's a it is a Milky Way, I think. Yeah, I, I think it is. It's like the same family, yeah. right? Yeah, I think it is. Outer space. Uh, <laughs> the outer space yes, version. Uh, the, yeah. yeah, okay, gotcha. This is, in most of the world, the Mars bar is a chocolate bar with nougat, caramel coated with milk chocolate. In the United States, it's marketed as the Milky Way bar. There you go. I know my candy bar. There you go. Uh, did you see what happened last I'm a night? Fat kid. And, <laughs> did you see what happened last night in the Cleveland Boston game? By uh, chance. I know the Cleveland came storming back or no. Maybe I didn't know that. What happened in the Cleveland Boston game? How about it sounds stupider? Uh the game was over in one hour and forty nine minutes. Well, that's quick. One hour and forty nine minutes. It is the shortest game. Since the Tigers Indians game on June second, twenty ten, the near perfect game. So one hour and forty nine minute baseball game. Final was two to nothing. There were eight hits in the game. There was only one walk in the entire game. And what is it? Uh, two hundred and ten pitches thrown. So pitch clock, not a lot of walks, not a lot of deep counts, not a lot of hits, resulted in an hour and 49 minutes. That's insanely fast. I I, I typically like quick baseball games relative to what they used to be. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I were at that game as a fan with a ticket, I'd be like, I don't know if I'd like it. I think if I'm working the game. Like, is it too quick? If you're working the game, it's awesome. But if, as a fan, like I, the new pitch clock era and everything, 
Dan Dickerson throws it to commercial break, and when they come back from commercial break, he's like, counts two out. Like he's starting, the inning has started <laughs> so often that I know it's tough for those guys because they have to wrap it up. Meanwhile, if you're sitting in, if you're Andy Dirks or Bobby Scales and you're sitting in the in the color commentator's chair, you got to be quick, man, because that pitch clock is cut down on. Yeah, it's different. I, You know, it's, it's, I'd be interested to ask Craig Monroe about the difference between doing radio and TV from a color analyst uh, mm-hmm. aspect because obviously, oh, you know, TV, you can let the, the, the whole visual takes care of it and you can talk over it the whole time, but radio, you got to be, it's totally different. Um, that being said, yeah, that's an awfully fast baseball game. Mm-hmm. And I can remember being at some of those uh, way back in the day. Uh, there was some Steve Sparks was had some really quick starts back in the day for the Tigers as a knuckleball pitcher, but this one two to nothing in Boston, like that's a place where the ball flies out of the park and you get some high scores against a team like Cleveland that has kind of a high powered offense, and Boston starting pitcher Hauk threw for ninety four pitches. That was it. Wild, huh? Ninety four pitches didn't walk anybody. There was one walk batter between the two two teams. There were only eight hits. One double play was turned. I mean, not many, not many guys getting past, you know, first base in this game. Nope. Fast, fast moving baseball game. I'm still a huge fan of the pitch clock. And this is I one game. Yeah, it's but it's um it's changed the game for the better, in my opinion. The players have adjusted. I mean, I know that there was some blame from the Players Association for the injuries. There's, It's got to get looked at. They've got to do research to find out if it goes back to – because now, now everybody's theory is coming out of the woodwork, and I have no problem with looking out for the best interest of the players. If that means adding a, f- a few seconds to the pitch clock, I'm not going to yell and scream about it. But I got a theory. Guys are throwing harder than ever now. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be met with some unstable arms. When you're throwing that hard – Yeah. Body's not meant to throw the ball that hard. So when you're finding ways to tweak it in your delivery so that you're able to throw it that hard, something's going to break down at some point. That's my theory. I don't think it has anything to do with the pitch clock, but I could be wrong. Let them do the research. You're right. Tigers take it on Texas this afternoon. We'll get into that a little bit more and also bring you the best of what A.J. Hinch told the morning show as we get you set for the final of this series with the Rangers. In the meantime, Brad Holmes, Lions GM, one week from the draft, met with the media today, and he said something that had people guessing what he was talking about. We will get to that today at 1146. Here on Carson Anderson, a 97 won the ticket. The NBA play-in tournament gives teams a chance to play their way into the postseason, so it only seems right. The new customers on FanDuel can play their way into 150 bucks. Just place any $5 bet, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, to use during the NBA playoffs. So you can look at straight point spreads. Miami hosting Chicago, point and a half favorite, the Heat, or New Orleans at home getting a point and a half against Sacramento. That includes stuff like you can bet on three-pointers made in a game or over, under, on total points, first basket score. Just some ways you can play, pick and choose. FanDuel.com. Go to FanDuel.com slash Doug to get started. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or older and present in Michigan. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help.
I don't know if you saw this, but according to betonline.ag, there is a player out there in the NBA where the favorite to land his services is the Detroit Pistons. Household name. Oh, it's a household name? Household right. name. Is his last name Lysol? Lysol. But that's a household name. It's, it's, it's an actual basketball player? It is an NBA player. What, is this an ooh? Was this a woe? Would no. it be a woe if it were? If I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's a woe. Oh, boy. Pistons are the 5-1 to one favorites to land the services of Draymond Green. Nothing, Gator? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> okay, apparently that's a, I mean. It's not a woe. It's not a huh. Hmm. It's not even a huh. It's a, I mean. <laughs> this is like, um because the Warriors, everyone think, thinks they're going to break up. This is We saw this happen here with the Pistons, right? After you so many runs at yeah, it, and right. you're like, hey, did, you know, so Chauncey goes, Ben goes, whoever, you know, Rashid goes, Rip goes. I don't want that version. Of you know the, what did those guys do after they left the Pistons? Not much. And Ben Wallace he had a huge contract from Chicago. Didn't do much. I yeah, feel like Draymond did. Green would be the same thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it it really is the same thing. That feels to me like if that's the case, that means they failed with everything else they were trying to do. Because I can't imagine this would be a move. This is a move he could serve a function on a team trying to win a championship. Now, if you're going to blow things up in, in Golden State, and, and he could also blow up that team's chance to win a championship. Sorry, <laughs> he's, he can definitely do that. If you're going to blow up Golden State, and you say Steph Curry is okay, that's different. But Draymond Green—that's not what I was saying. I know it's not. I mean, if this is six, seven years ago, it might be. Oh, okay. Right. You know, yep. eyebrow slightly raised, but. Um, I think Draymond's playing himself out of the league. Yeah, he might be. And, I mean, the Pistons effectively have the most cap space in the NBA. But So don't throw it at Draymond Green. Well, yeah, I put it in my show sheet. What's the the first move the Pistons need to make? Well, they're going to hire a president. Right? That has to be. But the, here's the thing. I don't want to wait as, as a fan. I'd be disgusted if we have to wait a whole a long time. Like, I don't want to hear, oh, after the playoffs. No, 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 no. This decision to say that you have to hire a director of basketball operations for the Pistons, that decision to do, to, make, to to say you're going to go there should have been made immediately after the streak was done of losing 28 in a row or whatever, or halfway through it, whenever it was. At that point, you knew changes had to come. And then the weeks that followed only further substantiated that this is a complete S show of a team that you have to do it. So you better have started your search back in like February to find out who's going to lead this team. So if it takes, I mean, am I wrong in saying this? If it takes longer than a week, it, do it, does it feel like I'm hands up in the air that they really have no direction? They have no clue whatsoever. I don't know how far down the road they've been. And I just want them to get it right. And if it takes longer than a week, it tells me it's somebody with an organization that might not be available just yet. I yeah, I guess I'm not buying it. Okay. Um, I, I think I, to me that would sound like an excuse. I don't know what the rules are in the NBA. If it's you know anything like the NFL, you can't. You know, they're not interviewing. It might a have coach. nothing to do with the rules. It might be a guy who says, "I want to finish my season with my team," but just keep an eye on. Mm. All right. So I said Brad Holmes said something today. And people going, "Huh." Oh, well, let's get to the competent GM. <laughs> uh, Colton Pouncey, who covers the team for the Athletic, tweeted out. The Brad Holmes said there was a play. This is about the last year's draft. There was a player the Lions drafted last year that he and Dan Campbell were the lone wolves vouching for. Others in the war room wanted another player at the same position. Holmes said it worked out. And then Colton adds, any guesses? So I've come up with really, there's only four possibilities. If you're talking about guys that worked out. They did. Do you think they vouched for Gibbs and the room wanted Bijan Robinson? Do you think they vouched for Jack Campbell and the room wanted Nolan Smith, the linebacker from Georgia? Do you think they vouched for Sam Laporta and the room wanted Michael Mayer, the tight end from Notre Dame? Or do you think they vouched for Brian Branch and the room wanted Cam Smith, the corner from South Carolina? I mean, it doesn't have to be the alternative that I suggested, but. 
It's interesting that he threw that out there. Yeah, because I'm looking back at the draft from last year, and you know, obviously we didn't see Hendon Hooker play. We barely saw Broderick Martin play. Yep. Um, I Antoine doubt he's talking Green. about Sorsdal. Yeah, or, I mean, yeah. Sorsdal's a possibility, but I, I think you're probably right. So if it's a top four, I mean, I don't. It's not going to be Jameer. Uh, although could is be, it? It could be Bijan. The room could have wanted Bijan, and they said we want. Say the quote again. Uh, this is Colton Pouncey. It's not a direct quote. He just tweeted this out. There was a player the Lions drafted last year that he and Dan Campbell, he being Brad Holmes, were the lone wolves vouching for. Others in the war room wanted another player at the same position. Okay. Holmes said it worked out. Any guesses? So the same position, I would imagine that it's Jack Campbell. The room wanted maybe like Nolan Smith. It went- yeah, maybe they wanted to go somewhere with more flash with a pass, with a pass rusher type guy. Mm-hmm. Although, you know what? No. When was – I'm going to go back and look at this. Uh, I'm thinking Sam Laporta was taken by the Lions. With I think the, Michael Mayer went the next pick. He did. So I'm going to say it's Sam Laporta. Okay. I'm going to say the people said that they should take Michael Mayer, and they took Sam Laporta. I, yeah. I mean, these are all possibilities. It's not like Bijan sucked, and Bijan was on the board, and the Lions traded out of there. So I don't know that that would – if they traded out of there, were, were they screaming? Were people in the room telling them, take Bijan at six? And he said, no, I want to move back and take Gibbs. It's a possibility. Campbell, I mean, I, I'm still very, very high on Jack Campbell as a player, but it, I don't know that he'd be doing victory laps about Jack Campbell just yet. Sam Laporta and Michael Mayer makes a ton of sense. Makes a ton of sense. Um, And you know what the thing about that whole room thing if I'm the GM of a team, I do want dissenting opinions. I do want people that have other points of view so it's not just a bunch of yes men that whatever I say, there's no pushback. So, you know, I think it, I think it speaks to a healthy room when they're there at the draft and people are offering up dissenting opinions. That tells me you're, you got a better chance of getting it right because if everybody just agrees with what the GM wants, then what purpose are the scouts really serving? The next true linebacker that went, like not outside lineback- linebacker or edge rusher, because Jack Campbell is like, he's a true like middle linebacker type, mm-hmm. would have been, you'd have to get to the third round and Drew Sanders was taken. Ah, uh, la 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 la. Kid from Arkansas. Who played in all 17 games, but was really a special teams guy. Well, Nolan Smith went late first round. Yeah, but Nolan Smith was an edge rusher, right? I mean, it was an outside linebacker, edge rusher type because he had all that speed. Um, well, either way, I mean, I, I was trying to figure out who else. Because I don't know that they would even be considering Drew Sanders in the in the first round. Yeah, well, you're probably yeah. right. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven open lines. Carson Anderson ninety seven won the ticket draft one week from tonight in Detroit. Let's go to Jason and Royal Oak. Hi, Jason. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call, man. I uh, appreciate you guys. Love ninety seven one. Great. Um, I was calling about Draymond Green. Yep. Um, in my opinion, is heck yeah, and not just because I'm a Spartan, because we need the bad boys of old. We need people who are willing to give hits and take hits. And Draymond Green is that guy. Draymond Green is basically a lamb beer, just stronger and more athletic, in my opinion. Well, the problem <laughs> is that they don't allow teams to play basketball like they did in the 80s and early 90s. That's the problem. Otherwise, I'd be, I hey, I think you make a, make a point. But now it's Draymond Green's a, an injection waiting to happen and actually can have <laughs> a negative influence on players like – if Isaiah Stewart is that type of player, if he could be that type of player, that's great. You're a throwback, but you're also getting thrown out of games, and it's not conducive to to playing hoops today. I think for the Pistons, it would be a benefit to have Draymond Green here. He's not going to make the team, but he would be a benefit because he would he plays the game hard and he plays the game to win. That's all I got. That's my opinion. Well, I'd, I'd say this: the one thing about Draymond is he does play the game hard. And he he will, quote-unquote, battle for you. And there's certainly times where he goes, it's not like he's going to cost Detroit a championship. So if he gets ejected from games here, it, 
it, it might be an interesting little experiment. I'm not 100% against it. I'm not thrilled by it either. And the reason it came up is because betonline.ag put the Pistons as an odds-on favorite to land his services next year. If he's, I can't remember the, how the wording was exactly, but uh, let's go back and look. Kang, how would you feel about it? I think Draymond Green, at best, he only fits in the right situation, and the Detroit Pistons are not that situation. He needs shooters. He needs other leaders around him. He, I don't even think, is a true leader anymore because he can't keep himself under composure and in games. And how's he supposed to teach a guy like Beef Stew, who's kind of getting that rep a little bit where you know he doesn't get calls. He gets out of his, his emotions, get the best of him. I mean, we saw he already got... He got arrested this year. You know what right. I mean? It was before the game even started. So Draymond Green, this part of his career for this team, is not a match in my I mean, book. Best case scenario is that if you were to do this, that Draymond could help teach the intricacies of how to get without crossing a line, although it's hard to believe Does that. Does he but know just, that? I know. I'm just putting it. Suspend dis- <laughs> you know, your disbelief here for a second. Is it possible he could have a positive influence, not only on Beef Stew, but also Jalen Duran? Because it looks like those are two guys that maybe had that mean streak in them to get a little tougher. I don't know. I, I, I still think it's a bad idea. Uh, all right. A local player just said, told a story. If you didn't love him already, well, you might now. And if you love him already, you probably love him more. We'll get to that today at 1202. Get some draft stuff in. Got a Tiger game to preview this afternoon against Texas. It's Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket.
By the way, for those wondering, Brad Holmes did not ever tell the media, I guess, who the player was that he and Dan Campbell were lobbying for in the draft room. They were the ones that were going to battle for him with everybody else, and everybody else wanted somebody else. Why even say it? I don't know. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's how Brad... It's patting it, yourself on the back, isn't it? It is, without question. We're the smartest guys in the room, in a room full of scouts and everything else. We're the only ones that wanted this guy. Here's the thing about it. He's the man, and he's telling us he's the man. Well, he is the man. I'm not, I'm not denying that, but I'm just saying, do you need to, to, to say this? He doesn't need to. That's my job. Right, right. My exactly. job is to tell people how great exactly. Brad Holmes is. Like, I wish he had just come out and said something like, you know, Dan and I really, really lobbied hard for um, Sam Laporta. Let's be clear here. We didn't hear it. We're just reading a tweet about it. So maybe there was some... Maybe there were some subtleties, some nuance in the quote where it's not quite as. I'm not, I'm not as condemning him. Okay, I'm not good. condemning your guy. Okay. All right. He's still pretty. Because I'll defend him. I know you will. And I'll kick your ass if well, necessary. <laughs> he'll be upset. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. Before the break, I mentioned, and, and you, you found this, Daniela Bruce um, tweeted the following. And she, of course, reporter, uh, Tigers, Red Wings. Here on this station and other spots, uh, tweets out the following regarding cider. Remember, was it the was it the Pittsburgh game? I can't it was remember. Like it was Washington ago, yeah. game where whatever game cider was a huge game and cider missed the morning skate with a bug. Cider tweets out the following, or Daniela Bruce tweets out the following regarding cider. When cider missed the morning skate with that bug that was going around. He said he was in the hospital that morning. He played that night. Now, in some ways, this is standard operating procedure for NHL players. You know, took a puck to the mouth, lost six teeth, missed two shifts. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, broke his jaw, got it wired between periods, was put a cage thing. on, played the third. Took a took a skate blade to the cheek, signed JT Comfort. Yeah. You know? They, they put those little sutures on, and he was back out there. Crazy. Yep. But this is a team that has been, at best, mediocre for the three years Most Sider's been in the league. Mm -hmm. Most Sider in the, uh, in the NHL has played 82 games, 82 games, and 82 games. He hasn't missed a game in the three years he's been in the league. Wow. And he's averaged... About 23 minutes of ice time per game throughout his career. 22.51 in his career. We love Mo Sider. This is more reason to love Mo Sider. Got, we you know got how his, tough he is. You got his page up in front of you. How, how old is he? He is, uh, he just turned 23. I mean, this is incredible because we were talking about watching the arc of some of the greats in the league. And you're not, you're not your best at 23. No. You're he, typically your best at 25, 26, 27. How good can this kid be? How good can Lucas Raymond be? He came into the league as a 20-year-old. He played when he was 20, and by the end of the season, he was 21. So, I mean, that's you go into that. It's two years, basically, uh, of playing minor league, not even two years of playing minor league hockey. So a couple other quotes here. Again, Danielle Bruce talking to Red Wings on the way out and tweeting about it. Cider on this being his contract year. Quote, it's no secret I want to be a Red Wing. Then she continues added that he's confident he's an asset to this team overall i'm confident it will get done lucas raymond same topic contract negotiations because they're both restricted free agents quote i love this team i love this city i want to be here so uh I, you know don't want to read absolutely everything into that because what else are they going to say but right but in line with well, we asked what should be the first thing the Pistons do the, with the with the Red Wings. I think the first thing the Red Wings should do is just get these two done. These, it, it's a no brainer to get them both signed in there. They they want to be here. Red Wings want them here. Figure it out. Get it done. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um. One week to the National Football League draft. Earlier in the show, we had that seven round mock from Dane Brugler that we wanted to talk about. It feels like as we're getting closer, that there's more and more mocks and other things that are linking the Lions to Zach Frazier, interior offensive lineman from West Virginia. 
Apparently, we've ended the Kool Aid McKinstry phase of pre draft hype and entered into the Zach Frazier phase go. of pre draft hype. I'm not, I'm not against it. Something though happened in that mock draft that I think it never helps. And in that mock draft, the Lions traded back into the second round and got Frazier. If the Lions take Zach Frazier at 29, do not be mad. Do not say, quote, oh, they could have got that guy in the second round. Just because one mock draft had him trading back, getting more assets, and still getting Zach Frazier. If you like Zach Frazier, then like him where they take him. Because it's such an unpredictable science. And probably the best data that we have going into this thing is that the guy that's making the picks for the Lions has done a hell of a job. Hell of a job. So if he likes a guy and likes a guy in a spot, I mean, barring any WTF kind of pick, I'm probably going to be on board with it and say, oh, there could be, there is some WTF scenarios, but Zach Frazier's not why 29 is not one of them. No, no, yeah. I think it's a, it's a pick that makes sense. If that's what they would select, because they got to start thinking about the interior offensive line for the future. And sounds like a bulldog and sounds like he's got the mentality that the Lions look for. Yeah, I think it's obviously it would be a pick for the future, but a pick for now as well, because the you just need depth with that offensive line. Jonah Jackson got hurt last year. You know, you had to move guys around. Frank Ragnow is always a guy who's going to miss time during the week and maybe a game time decision every week. Who knows? But that's why when you draft a backup interior lineman, because when they went out and got uh, the guard from Baltimore, I forget his name. Uh, Zeitler. Yeah. He's on a one year deal. Yeah. So yes, it's now it's the future, but like I said, it's also now. And and don't get mad like you said when you oh, we could have got him at forty four. Brad Holmes said it from the beginning, and this is obvious. They just have more intel than we do, and they seem to get it right where the guy where they pick guys because they know they're not going to be available later. Something else to keep this in mind. Um and, and King, you, you brought the point, which kind of spurred us on is that whomever they take, if they've got the versatility to play play guard and center. Think about this, because it is a situation with Frank Rag now that he does miss time during the week that he's out. It gives the backup player an incredible amount of experience that they wouldn't normally get. More reps in they practice. They get all the reps in practice that they don't get if Frank Rag now is ready to, to practice all week. Look, Frank can take the whole week off. We know what he is. He's a Pro Bowl center. He's one of the top five centers in the league. We got it. He doesn't have to practice. But the guy who does, that practice time is invaluable to him. All right, maybe the biggest story today for Detroit Lion fans is the jersey release. Well, unfortunately, and it's been confirmed by the Lions, the people at Fanatics put an ad out on the USA Today Network, which showed a a, a Lions jersey like we hadn't seen before. Justin Rogers, uh, beat writer that covers the Detroit Lions, was the first that tweeted out and saying, okay, look, this is out there. This very well could be the Lions' new jerseys, and it has since been confirmed. These are just the jersey tops. Any changes to the helmet or pants have not been linked, and who knows what the whole thing looks like until we see them tonight at 7 o'clock, unless there are more leaks. However, if you want to see them at Dungator971, I would best describe there are three jerseys, the blue and the white, harken back to the Silver Dome, Spindler, Barry Sanders, Eric Kramer. The early to mid-90s. Right? Yeah, they look a lot like that. The numbers are white on the blue home jersey. The, the road whites, the numbers are blue with a gray outline. And the third jersey is a black Lions jersey with blue numbers. If you want to check them out, at Dungator971 on Twitter and comment. It is We have so many interactions with this and people commenting on them. Uh, and if you want to see a true difference between last, because it's more subtle than anything, these aren't bold and radical changes. Um, NFL Fashion Advice tweeted out a side-by-side -side picture of the Hutch jerseys, the old and the new. You can really see the difference. So uh, follow our Twitter feed, at Dungator971, and you can see that. Meanwhile, could another NFL team be shopping a player that the Lions would have interested in? We'll get to that today at 12.18. It's Carson Anderson, open line, some Tiger preview at 12.30, 97 won the ticket.
Well, grass is getting greener out there. The temperatures are getting warmer. And if you really want to have that beautiful lawn, make sure you call Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service where you get green and stay green with Natural Way. Uh, Natural Way's number, easy to remember, 888-GET-GREEN. And for a limited time, you purchase a full lawn program, you get free grub control, but you got to mention my name, Gator, and the station's 97 on the ticket. Look, you want the lush lawn. You want to be the envy of your neighbors. I got it. Call Natural Way. Call them right now. Absolutely. You want to take care of of your yard, you want to make sure there's no crabgrass, no dandelions, and you want to make sure there's no grubs. You take advantage of the deal right now, you get the free grub control. That first application, by the way, is the most important when it comes to crabgrass control. Crabgrass, dandelions, they're killers. They're going to choke out your yard. You don't want that. Call them right now at 888-GET-GREEN and get on the schedule early to prevent that problem rather than trying to fix it later because it's so much easier to do it this way. Also, Natural Way uses certified applicators and arborists. They come out to your yard, and they will custom tailor solutions specifically for your yard and your home because, look, your lawn is different than your neighbor's lawn, but they're going to love your lawn when you go to Natural Way. 100% satisfaction guarantee. It's a company that's been locally owned for over 30 years, and it's a company I've trusted to do my lawn for almost a dozen years. Give them a call today. Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service, 888-GET-GREEN, or go to naturalwaylawn.com. Okay, so draft is coming up in a week. Here's something we haven't talked a ton about. 
And that is the idea that you don't even make a pick. That you trade the pick for an established player. We don't talk about this much. It's hard to know what players are available, right? Right. Trade talk can come out of the blue. There's one team in particular that it feels like there's rumblings that they have coveted players that other teams might want that they might be willing to part with. I don't know how much to believe that that a couple of these are true. But in particular, this is coming out of Dallas. Yeah. So the Cowboys have a trio of players that are do extensions, and they're all really good players that are going to get paid handsomely. Mm-hmm. But if you're the Cowboys, the, everything starts with what do you do with quarterback? You know, Dak Prescott, when's he going to get his extension? Is it going to be for 50-plus? Remember, there was those rumors that he was going to get 55 to 60. Well, that died down, I think, in large part because the Cowboys are like, we're not paying at 55 or 60. So his his name is still there, and what are they going to do with him? I think they want to resign him, but it's going to cost you. Then it comes then then comes up the uh, wide receiver C D Lamb, who has missed a voluntary offseason program. Yep. Uh, according to a Dallas Morning News story, because he has yet to agree to terms on a contract extension. He said the two sides have uh, have yet not had any substantial talks about a new contract with Lamb currently set to play the 2024 season on his fifth year option. Then it says, meanwhile, all pro pass rusher Micah Parsons is also extension eligible this offseason and also not with a team as it begins the offseason program. However, it says that this situation might be different. Uh, eh, is it really? Because with him, it says he's missing the the uh, the program um, instead because he wants a more personalized training program, which he views as more beneficial. So he thinks it's better for him to train on his own. <laughs> with his guys as opposed to training with, with your team, which yeah. is interesting. And maybe it's more commonplace than we know. It, 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 it does happen in the NFL. Yeah. But if we're looking to, you know, turn over every stone and figure out what's there, is it possible that one or both of these players could be offered up? Dallas is, is it safe to say that Jerry Jones is a volatile owner yes. slash GM? Yep. You never know what he's going to do. You know, does it mean that he's going to trade somebody? He could, out of spite, this guy could do it. Yep. Right? Yep. He doesn't always make decisions for the betterment of the Cowboys. He does it for Sue his ego sometimes. It, it feels like any Micah Parsons talk, honestly, is blogger and and driven. Like, I haven't seen, you know, the, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram come out with a story about Micah Parsons being traded, but I sure can find bloggers writing about it. Sure. But if you think about it with the Cowboys, so here's a triumphant of players that C.D. Lamb could get $30 million a year, right? In line at 25 to 30, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Micah Parsons on the free agent market would be north of $30 million a year. But he's, he's one year, he's got one more year at a, at a very cheap price. Yeah. And then a, the, the extension would balloon him to like 21 million a year. So you could get two years out of him. But I mean, that extension would also balloon in the same year that assume well, Goff yeah. and, and Amon Ra would, I don't know how they'd fit it all under the cap. Maybe you don't extend him. Maybe you say, all right, we're doing the Buffalo thing. We're going all we're in for go this for season. But and, I would imagine then, it would come then, with a hefty price the other way. Obviously you'd have to give up more than just a first round pick. You'd have to give up multiple first round picks from Micah Parsons. You might, and uh, and you probably don't do that for a rental. You probably don't. Although, it'd be tantalizing. It'd be, it's, te- it's tempting as hell, right? Yeah. Because what does this guy Micah do for Parsons your defense? On the defense at an affordable price for one year is tempting as hell, right? Yeah. I, it would be one of the most go for it moves we've ever seen a Detroit team make, and I don't know. It would be, you'd have to give him multiple draft picks. He'd be affordable for one year under his contract. Then it would balloon to $21 million in a year where they've got to pay for Goff and Amon Ra as well. But 
the temptation is almost too much to say no to. Almost. But they don't seem to be operating that way. And I guess <laughs> I'm not mad at him for thinking, hey, we're trying to consistently compete, but I almost feel like you're creating an environment where to justify that you have to win multiple championships, which is fine. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. But I just want one, man. You know? Yeah. I mean, we got we got a, a little taste of what it's like to taste a sweet life. Yep. For 30 minutes, we felt really good about ourselves. Our first taste was free, but now yeah. we're talking about a heavy <laughs> price tag for Micah Parsons. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, it seems so unlikely because of how this organization operates these last couple of years. Like, they've said it themselves. Campbell said it. Like, talent has come through this door, but if the player doesn't fit what we are trying to do here culture-wise, they'll, they'll pass on talent. You know, they need both. They need to be – not everyone can be a Detroit Lion, right? And on top of that, to put all your eggs into one basket does not seem like Holmes at all. Like, he would not – it's more, yeah, hey, if you're going to pay anyone, they're going to pay the, their own guys that they drafted, that they yeah. developed. You know, They're not going to go out and get a big-time free agent. Yep. So I think just everything points to them not doing something this big. The player himself on the field is unbelievable. Micah Parsons is ridiculous on the field. But apparently his act is wearing thin in Dallas and things like that. I just, with things like that and the price it would cost, I just don't see it ever happening. It, 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 you, bet, you, you can't be any kind of – locker room question or character question. And I'm not saying he is, I don't know. I don't cover the team. There's reports yeah. out there, but I, I feel like we're taking message board and, and social media well, right. fodder to the air. And we got to be careful with this. Exactly. And and keep in mind, wh how does it start? Well, it starts because you lost your playoff game at yeah. home and that nobody it, thought you were going to lose except for Packer fans. But it or it is a, a trade for the draft pick at 29 for an established player should be in play. Like, they should be considering that. Where they are right now, it would be very Ramsey to do. L.A. Ramsey and Jalen Ramsey, if you know I what I'm saying. I see what you did yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Double entendre. Yeah, that's really good. You think that's good? Yeah, I think that's about the best I can bring to the table, to be honest with you. Well, so you brought four, your pen with you. <laughs> 248 Let's go to Greg in Dearborn. You're on 97 on a ticket. What's up, Greg? Hey, guys. Happy Thursday, Mo. Yeah, happy Thursday to you. <laughs> I might do it today. Today might be the day, Greg. How to do it? I've already had to do it twice, but I've got a crazy backyard. Wow, it is a Thursday. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. But uh, so now that uh, the wing season's over and we're all maybe a little less uh, emotional after, I mean, they scored with five seconds left. I, I three, so, yeah, <laughs> three seconds left. But um, so now uh, I don't want everybody fired like I did before, and I don't want you know uh, <laughs> Pete, Pete, Petrie hung up on a pole somewhere to rot. You know, I, I don't want that anymore. Um, but I think I, I think that ownership needs to go to Eiserman and be look at, you know, we're taking your Ford Explorer. It's nice. We're taking it into the shop, and, and we're putting that seat warmer in right now. And it's going to have four clicks on it. And he's got, he's got you got four years to get this done. However you want to do it, you do it. And then I think Eiserman has to go to Lalonde, and he has to say, look at that eight-game losing streak was insane. What happened? If that ever happens again, you know, you're out of here. And then after that, he needs to get a goaltender. I, I, it seems like that's been a blind spot with him so far. Maybe just because Huso didn't work out. But I like uh, L uh, Lukanen, I think you say his name is. Um, he's a restricted free agent with Buffalo. So you'd have to do like an offer sheet. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that all works out. I think it's scary. I, I think that when you start doing offer sheets, it gets scary because it ends up being compensation going the other way. And, yeah. you know, you don't – I mean, that, that happened to the Red Wings years ago when – Carolina signed Sergey Fedorov to uh, to an offer sheet. Red Wings had to match it to get him back, and it was uh, really kind of ruined the relationship at the time with Sergey and the Red Wings. Um, it's it's a dangerous game to play with it with the restricted, unless you really believe that that's a difference maker. However, Sebastian Kosa, who was a first round pick a couple years ago for the Red Wings when they had a couple first round picks that year, he was the later first round pick. He's really played well this year at Grand Rapids. Has played well lately. They played last night. They got the win. I think he made uh, 28 or 29 saves, something like that, last night in a, in a win. He's getting valuable experience right now as they're getting ready for a playoff push. Keep an eye on him. You know, I, I, he's grown up a lot this year. He had his chances in the uh, or to sh to show a little bit in the uh, 
in the preseason, and he looked outmatched. He didn't look like he was the guy. But as the season went on, obviously he's he's earned the right to be the guy at Grand Rapids. Will he have a chance to make the team next season? I mean, I'm sure he's got a chance to. I wouldn't say he is. But goaltending is an area that you would think is the quickest way that you can improve the Red Wings. All right, A.J. Hinch joined the morning show. He talked about how he's handling the psyche of some young players and the booing of Javi Baez, what he makes of it. Hear what the skipper had to say coming up next, Tiger Baseball this afternoon. Hey, getting your plans ready for the weekend, look no further than Twin Peaks. They have an all-star event happening Saturday night as rising superstar Ryan Garcia enters the ring facing off against undefeated Devin Haney. Garcia is looking to bounce back from his only loss in his career. He's got an uphill battle against Haney. Have you been to a fight night at the Peaks? There isn't a better place to watch. As not only do you have the best AV system any bar offers and wall-to-wall TVs and amazing audio, they got food and beer you won't find at any other sports bar in the state. Most people, they know about the Scratch Kitchen by now, House Smoke Meats, Handcrafted meatballs, hand breaded to order chicken wings and tenders, hot and crispy flatbreads. They've got it all. My favorite part, you wash it down with the coldest beer in the state right now, Summer Shandy. One of my favorites. The beer of the month. So take advantage of that while you watch the most anticipated mo- boxing matchup of the year. Twin Peaks. To find a location nearest you, go to TwinPeaksRestaurant.com. It's TwinPeaksRestaurant.com. Twin Peaks eats drinks and scenic views. Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97, one a ticket, 248-539-9797. All right, let's get to some Tiger stuff. Lose yesterday, 5-4. The formula, Gator, the formula was not in play. The formula for this team in the early season 
They've gotten to be an over 500 team by pitching and defense. They have pitched very well, and they've played very good defense. Yesterday, they made a couple of errors. The Colt Keith first error of the season was pretty costly. I'm not condemning Colt Keith. He's been actually, ironically, better in the field than with the bat, and the bat's strength. Um, but it, it it made things more difficult on uh, Scooble than it should have been. It was part of a big inning, the, um, the three-run sixth inning that kind of tilted the game heavily in Texas's favor. So Gator, um, look, we know what it is, right? I mean, Parker Meadows did hit a home run, and we know how good he's been defensively, and I'm okay with the offensive struggles of Parker Meadows. I mean, I, I don't love these batting below 200. I, <laughs> I don't love that by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I do love his defense. He can bat better than he's been hitting. Let's start with that. But really, the answers offensively are more likely to come from Torque, from Riley Green, and from Javi Baez, who are hitting way below what the expectation was. And we know they're capable of more. Can you de- If your formula is going to be great defense and pitching, then I tolerate Parker Meadows' struggles. It's harder to tolerate when Riley Green's hitting 222, although his on base has been pretty good. But the power stroke, huh? Torkelson's had no power, hitting 211, although he barreled he's one up of, yesterday. He's had a bunch of doubles, yep. though. But you, and, he's paid to get the ball over the fence. And Baez, we, we, his issues are well documented. Um, and RBI yesterday. Yes, and it was a big one. Mm-hmm. In the case of Parker Meadows, though, the guys asked A.J. Hinch this morning on the morning show, how are you handling the psyche of the young center fielder? And here's what A.J. Hinch had to say. Gator, what do you make of of the patience afforded Parker Meadows? I mean, I I'm I'm fine with it to this point. Like I'm I'm not at a breaking point with him. Where it's April 18th, I've I've said all along, kind of waiting for the full month to go by and and see where he is at. So, is he making strides? Is he making better decisions at the plate when he swings and when he doesn't swing? I mean, he had a couple of, of deep balls yesterday, which was good. You like that he's left-handed. You like that he's got speed, and you like that he can play defense, but you do want to see him hit more, and he's going to have to do better than 100 on the season. But yep. I suspect that moving forward, the next 30, uh, 30 at-bats for him will go much better than the first 30 did. By the way, I'm not kind of saying play with Cole Keith. I mean, Cole Keith is known for his bat. I am willing to continue to be patient with a team that's trying to win and a guy that's provided very little offense, but – if he's going to be good defensively, which is probably one of the bigger surprises mm-hmm. this year, going back to all the questions in spring training and listen to all those Dan Dickerson broadcasts and reading the tweets and all that, it was like, yeah, but can he play defensively? We think he's going to hit, but can he play defensively? Yesterday was the first air. And, you know, the, we'll see if he can keep it up. It's probably too small a sample size to do victory laps over his defense. But, right. but if he's contributing in that way, into this team's potentially successful formula, um, could be an interesting watch. Now, but he is going to have to. He is going to have to hit, and he, I suspect. I, I, well, I'm not suspect. I'm. I'm. I, I'm expecting. I am too. Him to, to turn the corner and start to hit. I think he's had some really good bats. I think he's got a good eye at the plate, and I think also to an extent, like every other rookie in Major League Baseball, you're going to get squeezed. Umpires know that you're a rookie, and they don't care. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think they discriminated against you. They're going to call anything that's questionable. They'll call for a strike. All right. Uh, next up, the booing of Javi Baez, which I know you and Stoney talked about earlier in the week. Happened over the weekend, and uh, Baez addressed it. AJ, It came up to A.J. Hinch about what's, what's fair and what's not, and here's what the Tiger manager told our morning show.
So this question, the way he answered it, it's like a hot grounder. That could have gone a variety of ways. It didn't turn into a headline. <laughs> like no. A.J. Hinch didn't didn't get after the fans. But he also kind of acknowledged, I understand your frustrations. We understand your frustrations. Oh, and, and Javi did too. Yeah. To a point, I mean, he's like, you can boo. Booing's fine. Yeah, I get it. I, he booed everywhere he goes. He, know, he understands. And, you know, would he like to be cheered as opposed to everybody on the positive side? Yeah. But he said what bothers him is when people cross the line. When you make it personal, when you when you swear, when you know he's got his families in the crowd and if, you know yelling stuff and his family's hearing it, that's a little rough. But if you're just going to boo him, he, he's okay with that. And that, I think AJ Hinch took the same the same path. Everybody's everybody's fine with it. Um, you know, it's not it's not what I do when I go to a game, but I understand why people do. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, today. The Tigers are taking on the Texas Rangers in the final game of this series, and Jack Leiter is making his major league career, uh, his debut. Uh, he is high draft pick. Did he go one one? Uh, I think maybe been second pick overall, but he is okay. he's not had a great minor league no career to this point. I mean, he's only been in for a couple of years, but he, it's it's not like he's had this great rise through the minors. He was picked second overall. Uh, in the major league draft. So Tigers going after a rookie pitcher here today. It would be nice to see them not make him look like Cy Young. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Um, Cause we've seen enough of that. It feels like, Hey, so-and-so making their debut. And next thing you know, it's six innings with one earned run and four hits. And, and you're like, come on, mm-hmm. be better than that. Let's see him get after him. Let's see the bats light up, have good at bats, make them work. Cause that's something young pitchers. It seems like they're going to have to face is, is base on balls. Get on the base pass. How about stealing some bases? Well, got to get your fast guys on base, too. Well, yeah. do it. <laughs> As you heard, they want to get Parker Meadows to take advantage of that. Kenta Maeda going for the Tigers. Tiger baseball is next. Stay safe, everyone, and treat each other with respect. 97-1.